yo, what up? What up, crew, party animals? Welcome to another Lefty Live. Tonight we're going to have Ben on from Jack Wolf Knives talk about the newly dropping Pioneer Jack. Dropping tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. Get excited. I got the sick, toxic version. Ben will run us through all the versions that he has. I also have a new Devo model to show you. This is the Devo Knives Nip. And I got four versions of that bad boy. I jumped on here a little early tonight so I could run through the nips. And then when we get Ben on, we can mostly talk Jack Wolf. So we're not kind of, you know. Um, but that was my plan. What up? Nuts for Knives. How you doing, man? I hope you're doing well. I remember... Last live stream, might have been two weeks ago now, you were having a rough one, so I hope you're doing better, dude, and uh, appreciate you. We love you, man. Jesse, what up, dude? How you doing, man? Allie Cord, Paracord, what up? What's up, Alice? I wonder if Ben will be a guest tonight. I wonder. I wonder. Censor, what's up? Robert Reno, first live in the new house. Yes, sir. Check it out. This is... The new office slash studio finally got my own spot up in here. So I took over this room. I got this desk right here, right here that has uh, my recording stuff on it and whatnot. Um, and then I have another desk for work, which is cool. So I don't have to share the same desk and do everything in a three foot area that's how i was doing everything before i literally had everything in the corner of a room like i mean it could not have been more than like six by six like just imagine a six by six square that's how i did everything that i did before now i got a nice big room up in here so i gotta fill it out i gotta get some stuff on the walls i got my uh my devo uh framed hanks i got my uh jack wolf frame stuff i got pictures of my dogs i gotta get all that stuff up it's gonna be good but yeah i'm still trying to figure it out a little bit i got the uh the mount on the windowsill here so it's not connected to the desk so when this desk rattles it's rattling right now we don't rattle right I don't know, my brain's rattling because the laptop's rattling, but I don't think I was rattling on your end. You know what I'm saying? Check out my new hat. This is uh, my newest Peace Neighbor hat. I picked this up when Sean dropped uh, all the Peace Neighbor stuff. This one has this kind of clasp in the back, and then it has this blue color and the peace sign. Very cool. And it has the same sort of meshy... Uh, four stretch, whatever that shit's called, material as the black one I have. And I love that. I still like the black one better because it has like more of a square look here, right? Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's a little tighter on the sides where my head is so small that like, you know, even tightening this down, it looks a little goofy here on the sides. Um, and the other one doesn't do that, but... I don't think it's, you know, it's not a deal breaker. I just like that a little bit better. Um, but I like this blue, and I am digging the hat. So check them out. Go check out Peace Neighbor. Drizzy, what up? Revolving Blades, what up? Craig Wilkes, what's up? Looks like Ben got here early. You ready to go, Ben? Give me a thumbs up. All right. What up, dude? What up? What's cracking? Oh, just staying productive. How about you? Same, bro. Just trying to get back on the horse. It's been a little weird with the move. Just trying to get shit rolling again, you know? It's a big, big deal to pull up your roots and plant them again. Yeah. Yep. But hey. all for the better. I bought a, bought a John Deere riding mower right before the live stream. <laughs> Sweet, dude. Make sure you get pictures of you yeah, on that bed. Yeah, dropped it off. Yeah, I'm stoked. Hey, everybody. Um, 
Craig Wilkes. Lou, what up? What up, Lou? M Bong, what up? I was just saying hi to the audience. I saw some folks say hi to me in the chat. So it was just uh Hell yeah. saying hello. I'm gonna share this into my Facebook group real quick while you do your thing. You do that. Leo Bob, what's up? Um, let's see, Paul Mills, Demon Ock. Uh, I was just telling everybody we're going to talk about the Pioneer Night, but I did jump on early because I was going to show off the new Devo knife that came in, the Nip. Nice. Excited about this little guy, so I wanted to I like that. this before we hit all Jack Wolf stuff. Let's do that. Let's do it. Um, let's see, am I caught up? I am caught up. So... Yeah, let me talk about this real quick, and then we'll jump into Jack Wolf. So I got the Devo Knives Nip. This is our newest model. It's a little guy. It's the micro knife in the lineup. So I went through a phase where I had some micro knives. I had, like, the Baby Barlow. I always want to say banter. Baby Barlow, the Monaco. Those are from Urban EC. I had the Giant Mouse Nibbler, and I just was like, hey, why don't we do a micro knife? And this is what Colin spit out of the, the machine. And uh, I love it. It's fucking sick. We're actually working on a slip joint version of this. So this is the nip. And then we're going to have the nip slip. And uh, hollow ground S90V, Kubi, OEM on this guy. And we got four versions. This one is a traditional pocketknives.com exclusive. This is the murdered out chaw version. That Austin went with. Black wash blade, all PVD, everything on there. Liner and, lock? What? Is it a liner lock? Yeah, inset liner lock. I'll show you one that's not coated. It'll be easier to see. And then this one is a White Mountain Eyes exclusive. This one's all stone wash titanium with blue accents. Stone washed S9 EV. Can see it a little better there. I think those are going to be a winner for you, man. Yeah, these are sick. People are excited about them. I'm excited about it. I've been carrying one for the last, I got them yesterday for the last 24 hours and fucking love this thing. And then these two are going to be through us. This is black pearl camo carbon. That looks good. Satin accents or hardware and then black accents. And then finally got Kubi to do a legit belt satin. So yeah, we got the two-way two belt satin on that hollow, hollow, hollow ground S9DV. That's the black pearl. And then I think this is going to be the winner right here. This is purple and lavender oh, yeah. camo carbon. And then purple accents. You know, I like Same. purple accents. Yep. Same belt, satin blade. Is the milling pattern in the carbon fiber? Yeah. Show me that up close. Because a brother might steal that. It fucking, dude, I'm surprised at how well it came out on the <clears throat> carbon fiber. Here's the... Dude, I love that. Here's the tie. Yeah, that looks good too. And it actually translated really well to the carbon fiber. I mean, obviously you're probably going to have a little more like, you know, you're going to have some edges and stuff with carbon fiber. I don't see any, but I imagine it's not going to be as crisp as that, you know? Sure. But yeah, it looks, it looks sick. The action on these, I mean, for, for a two and a quarter inch blade, the uh, closing action is surprisingly good on them. How long is the handle? 3.4? I just measured it. Hold on. So it's like a little bro size, but obviously wider. It's it's taller. Is it little bro? Well, it's little bro's 3.55, five, five, I think. <clears throat> yeah, three point, just about three and a quarter, I would say. Oh really? yeah, man, that's a it's a micro it's knife. Five point sure. four overall. Five point four overall. So, so here is 
the Pioneer. So there's a comparison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Ultim, dude. That Ultim is sick. So, anyway, these are going to be dropping right after Blade West. We'll do a drop on these. We're going to bring some to Blade West. That'll be kind of like a soft launch. And the dealers can do whatever they want. So, uh, I'm going to try to get these QC'd this weekend and see, get them out to those guys. They can do whatever. Or they can, you know, go with us and drop them at the same time. But they should be uh, 175 across the board. So that'll be that. And uh, there's your Devo section of the live stream. Let's talk about the Pioneer Jack. I want to see all the versions you have of this bad boy. I have the Toxic Fat Carbon with Belt Satin. This one's sick, dude. This came out really well, and this one just broke in so well. I mean, if you find you need to tweak the pivot, you know, you certainly can, but I like that you have given it a chance to smooth out before you dove right into it. That's always advisable. Yeah, um, I mean, I tried, as... <laughs> I tried briefly, and the Loctite was holding, and I was like, you know, I'll just, I'll just shut up and let it, and I'm glad I did because, I mean, it has the, the Jack Wolf, pop you know and it jumps and all of that but yet is a bank vault side to side i mean it is impressive honestly how good the walk and talk is for how tight this knife has to be to be no play i mean slip joints notoriously for me when they have great walk and talk it's usually because they have a little bit of play you know yeah you like um you you prefer so it's a trade-off like the more friction there is from the clamp force mm -hmm. the more it will impede the jump but the essentially you can lock that blade play out to nothing <clears throat> and like you said in your video it is a testament to the execution of these that you can usually dial them in to where you have the walk and talk that's jumping and no blade play but like it doesn't take more than like i don't know like not a quarter turn, not an eighth turn, not a 16th turn, but just like a tiny little bit. And all of a sudden it's jumping like this, but you can get a little bit right. of play in it. There's like a yeah. tiny perfect spot for that pivot, which drives us crazy sometimes in QC because sometimes they make them too tight and we fix them, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's hard. And not, dude, most people, what I've come to find is they don't open them and close them crazily like we do all the time so they can't tell the difference either way like they don't have the feel most people it's the same thing with detents you know like i've learned with devo like what i want and what is acceptable are completely different things like there has to be a range of things like you can't expect an oem to hit your exact bullseye every time with everything and that doesn't mean it's bad if it doesn't hit it you know what i mean well, it's just a you, statistical reality of right. doing hundreds of something. Well, and you have Joe Schmo, who he likes uh, more on the softer side. And you have me, who likes it ripping their finger off. Like, so you might get it perfect, send it to Joe, and he's like, this sucks. Right. You know? And then it's, so there's just, you have to understand the range. And, and, and that's where you got to be like, okay, it's not acceptable. It is. You know, whether it's perfect or just good, it's fine, you know, because exactly. that just good to me is perfect for somebody else. Right. Yep. Yep. And, and if you're trying you to dial, people, you know, you got to swap them out. And that happens because you get the guy who likes X and the guy who likes Z, you know. Yep. Which one? Is that? Alex, oh, this is uh, DMB. Dark oh, Matter Blue. nice. Yeah, that looks good, dude. And you can see, like, <clears throat> first time I've done this, the chamfer's in the carbon. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, because yeah. usually I guess they're... Um, usually they're just contour all the way to the end. Or there's but, a bolster. Or there's a bolster. Right, there'll be chamfering in the bolster, but this time I had them chamfer the carbon fiber. And it's, you know, it doesn't show up as much because it, it's in the carbon fiber, but it's there. And... 
Well, yeah, you can dude. see the uh, the layers in that area. That's how it, exactly. That's how it shows itself. Yeah, on it's not really on the dark cool. matter, but definitely on the toxic. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Alice asked a question. Alice, I got your pouch, and it's freaking amazing. I'm carrying. I haven't put. I apologize. I haven't put the pioneer in it yet because I'm carrying a different knife in it right now. Um, I'm carrying a prototype around in it. So, but Thanks, the knife God. I have in there is about the same size. So I can't imagine it wouldn't fit perfect, but I can. Um, and I, I gave it to my daughter to look at because she was making some paracord crafts at summer camp this year. So I wanted her to see her work. So I'll snag it from her later and uh, test fit it. Nice. What up, Ionan? How's so it this, going? Thanks. This was interesting. Let's talk about Ultim. Yeah, dude. Because it's cool. It gave me like more. It's the word I'm looking for. Like anxiety than any other handle material I've ever done. Because so clearly there's been a demand for it with other knives and shit, you know. But then like things are they get hot and then they get cold. And the knife market in and of itself is cold right now, like ice. And I was like, man, like, did I miss my timing on this? You know? And I'm also thinking like... Neither. <laughs> nice. You know, I'm also thinking like, you know, you hear people like, some people love it and some people hate it. They'll be like, looks like petrified piss, you know? And it's like... I call well, it that. Yeah, and it's go. like... You're not exactly you. wrong. I mean, it does have the golden hue of urine, you know. You. Um, but it's also like really freaking cool. This like cool amber honey color. I like. I don't even know what to relate it to. So anyway, I was just having a emotional tug of war over this, and like, uh, it's a the, good the, one, dude. It'll be it'll be popular. I think. I, I already know it will be just based on. You're gonna get all the. You're gonna get all the pirates, man. You're gonna get all the pirates with that one. Yeah. The Instagram. And you're gonna see a lot of Instagram pics with with the Ultim. That's good. I like. I like that. Yeah. So. How do you think it came out? I think it came out good. I mean, dude, yeah. the like we went through a lot of prototyping with it and trying to get the right polishing finish. and all that. Exactly, man. Because the first ones they sent me, I'm like, this looks all scratchy. Like, this doesn't work. You know? Yeah, you did the same so, thing with the Kira Knight, right? I put all those materials through the process together. So yeah. we kind of figured out the wood and we figured out the Kira Knight. We figured out the Ultim and, you know, yeah. But <clears throat> so first I was like, I want you to polish the top and polish the bottom. So it's like crystal clear. And they're like, we can't polish the bottom. Like, it won't be perfectly flat. I'm like, oh, shit, you know? And it kind of had, like, a scratchy surface. And I'm like, I guess I'm going to give away a little trade secret here. I'm like, polish the top, bead blast the bottom. Right. So that was the solution to get. It's like, a, it's not perfectly clear. Like, there's a little bit of opacity, like a little bit of haze. That's from the but, blast, right? from the blast on the bottom of the ultimate and the fact i think also the titanium is blasted but if it was crystal clear that screw would be really defined but now i know like you can mill this stuff off the machine and get like a really clear finish but i'm not a machinist i don't know how to do that and then trying to learn that and explain it to them it's like i don't have time for that right now you know and i don't even know if that's going to translate nor do i know if they're going to know what i'm talking about so it's like what do you have the capacity to do? It's like, all right, you made the top clear. Sweet. What can you do to the bottom? Well, we can't polish yeah. it, but you can be blast it. Let's try that. And I was like, all right, that works. Because what I've noticed a lot of Chinese OEMs do here in the past is they're blasting the top and the bottom. Hmm. So if you look at a lot of recent Ultim, I'm not going to name names. You tell me if you can figure it out. But if you look at, I can tell just from looking, that they're blasting the top and the bottom, which is not what I prefer. Are we talking about that Noel Knives Scorpion knife? Man, I don't know what's up with that because <laughs> obviously his color was off, and I don't think it was the underlying. I had one in, actually. Josh Worth sent me his because I proxy for him, and it was, it was like gray, basically. It wasn't really like the color that you would think of. So wherever the material came from just wasn't, 
the think it's right the wrong theory. stuff. Yeah, which happens. Yeah. But I believe they're uh, they're remaking in Ultim now, and he's I think he's just giving them to people who have one. So yeah, he had a post about it on Instagram. I mean, he's yeah. handling that. He's handling that correctly. Yeah, you know, I think it took a minute, and, and that's kind of how it goes. Like your first instinct is always to kind of like ju not justify it, but you know, because it you know it's your business, it's money. You've put a lot of effort into it, but you know, you slowly realize like there is somewhat of a problem here that we we can handle. And then you have the means to handle it. You only made like 50 of them or 25. So you can, you know, so uh, it was kind of cool to see them go through that process. But looks like it ended up in the right uh, situation there. And uh, if anybody's interested, uh, Noel Knives has a new pre-order up, I think, tonight. I don't know if it's there, live, no. but for the Raikou. So you guys can check that out. Somebody let us know if you ordered one or uh, if they sold out already. I know his stuff goes fast. So just wanted to mention the pre-order for the Raikou. I got to handle the prototype. Very cool knife. And if you don't want to mess with a pre-order and you want to get a knife by Monday or so. <laughs> or get both, you know. Or get both. Or get both. Yeah, Dude, the walk and talk on these is some of the best I've ever done. I think, like it is, it is boom, boom. Yeah, once it broke in for me, it's fucking money. It's money for sure. Um, I carried this for. I've carried it every day since I got it. That's just what I do with with the ones you sent. I just. You know, I carry a slip joint basically every day. And when you send a new one out, it just ends up in pocket for a couple weeks straight, basically, uh, which is always good because I get a really good feel for them, probably more than anything else that I review. Um, and I happen to be moving and this one got used a lot. And dude, it is such a good cutter and user. Um and it's so comfortable in hand, too, you know? Like, personally, sure, I'd probably, if, I, you know, had my druthers, I'd want a lower tip. Obviously, that would change the whole design. But um, it still got into boxes and everything just fine the way it is. And I love the sodbuster look. Are we allowed to call it that? I know there's... Yeah, so I just can't publish the name. You right. know, I can't use it in my marketing materials. I've seen people do that, it. though. So. Well... I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's just like, what, doesn't GEC have one? They, they, call call a, they, call a, they call it a bull nose. Oh, bull nose. And then there's that other company that has a locking one. They call it, uh, it's the Smith and Sons. They call it a mud yeah. bug. So they don't. So I, it's my brain that does that. It's because it's like Kleenex. It's not really called Kleenex, it's called tissue. Right. But we right, all just call it, it Kleenex. So. I mean, that, a testament to Case and the fact they picked a name that just has sticky, you know, a sticky factor. Um, it's, just a, it's just a cool name that I think, yeah. It's just the name for it, you know? Exactly. Um, I've always loved this pattern, and uh, I don't know if I said this in my video, but I've wanted a Sodbuster for so I was super stoked when I first saw that you were dropping this. Because I've always wanted a sodbuster, but I've never found one that isn't super traditional, you know? Yeah. Um, G or, or whatever. whatever. A lot of times they're really, like, utilitarian. Like, yeah. there's not, there's really not bougie sodbusters. Like, right. I don't think it's anybody true. else. Well, now, Evan Nicolaitis has done some customs of his, um, whatever he calls it, with the, yeah. But under, yes, Esnix. And he's got the one with the bottle opener on the back. Oh, you're and talking about the beer buster. The beer buster. I never even put that together really as a sod buster. I guess it is. It's called the beer buster. Yeah. It's a, it's a sod buster. Yeah, but so, it doesn't, to me, have this exact same vibe. But yeah, yeah, it, it is for sure. I actually had the uh, I had the front flipper version and then from Austin. Very mm -hmm. cool knives. Um, yeah. They talk about one that you could not pinch open. Like you can't pinch his slip joint open. 
that nail nick on his is like yeah is i did a video on it there was one version somehow it had some kind of finish or something that i could get it enough um that's a big balance with this design you know i cannot stress to you how challenging like to me there was no perfect solution between easy to pinch a handle that didn't look ridiculous because you cut a huge arc out of it to make it easy to pinch right, right, and then like getting me a notch or whatever yeah like it, the okay so we buy knives for lots of reasons but i think one we can all agree on is we like the way they look like they gotta be aesthetically pleasing so but and for definitely me, one of your hallmarks so yeah i've got to look so i and i've got to respect the lines of the pattern and so I just really wrestled with this design until I came up with what I thought was a fair balance. And it, I think if it, it excels in ergonomics, for sure, it's extremely comfortable. It's not going to excel in the easiest knife to pinch open. But, and like you said in your video, especially for right-handed people, like I open a slip joint with my right hand. I've been doing it since I was like a little kid. And so thumb in the nail, Nick, pull it open. Like, I never fail this thing. And, and for anybody who wants, and something you didn't mention in your video, I made a comment was you can, in fact, just use the nail, Nick, as long as you don't have paper thin nails. Yeah, I like, can't. Get I your can't. fingernail in there and pull it open. It's actually really easy to open from half to, or from close to half. Hmm. Yeah, with it doesn't nail. matter how soft the spring is, which this is not. Um, a nail, Nick, will just literally bend my nail back. Could be how not I the, do it. I don't know, but I just I don't can't think even... you're the only one, dude. I think it's just your genetics. You know, it's your fingernails. Like I had another customer write me, and he has a cyborg and a low drag. And he's like, Hey man, he's like, Do you have any of these that have like softer springs? He's like, because every time I try to open these, they're pulling my nail back. And I'm just like, Well, first of all, most guys don't use the nail nicks on my yeah, knife. Both of those are guys, easy. Pinch open. Yeah. And I was like, I'm like, I'm like thinking if you haven't tried pinching them open, give it a try because that'll solve your problem. It's especially the cyborg. I mean, there's meat all day. Um, is there a reason why there isn't a nail nick on both sides? Well, Kresk, you could do it for my rationale is traditionally there never was. And I'm left-handed also. So, and, and and frankly, it's an ambidextrous knife either way, um, yeah. as long as you can pinch them. So I well, personally, even, even if you can't, I use the nail neck. I dig into it and then pinch on the other side. Yeah, I always grab the nail neck because because the hollow grind in these. See, yeah. one thing a lot of people miss in reviews or when they're talking about slip joints that don't cost quite as much. I don't see a lot of people talk about how crisp these nail nicks are. Like this is done in a separate operation. There's this cutter that spins and it has like a blade that sticks out and it like slices in that nail nick deeper than deeper than deeper. And they have to get it deep enough and then they grind the bevel and it leaves like the nail nick looking like this. So <clears throat> it's more work to do a proper nail nick instead of just taking the CNC router and carving in what looks like a half pipe you know, like a lot of knives have. Hmm. So because of how these are done and because these blades aren't stonewashed or tumbled or whatever, these are crisp. So when you pinch them, you get right in there. Yeah, I would, um, now that he brought it up, I think it actually looks way better on the nail neck side aesthetically. Absolutely. It's like an eye you know, <clears throat> and yeah. part of the challenge when I'm designing these things is you cannot just put the nail nick wherever. It's got to look good. The nail nick has to look good. It has to be in the right spot. It has to look good like this. Then the other thing, Kevin, I nerd out on, especially when I'm drawing these things, is how does the knife look like this? Kind of looks like know. a javelina right here, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it's got a similar um, snout, I guess. But I like the knives. I, I want them to look good in the 90. Yeah. I can't take pictures of it in that position for shit, but I always try. <laughs> it's hard, man. It's hard. 
Um, I mean, I can't take pictures in general. So for me, they got to look good in the 90, in the nine, in the three positions open. Yeah. And it's got to be like a legitimate um, half too, because I hate when you have a slip joint and it's like here or here. like, yeah, it's just Legit. fucking weird. It's so weird. I like to have it actually pop to a half and then bang down. Drink water, the membership. Thank you, dude. I thought you were a member already. Thank Drink you water. again, sir. Um, I think I saw some questions in the chat. Over a fuller on a slippy. It depends on a slippy, you know. I think on say uh, the. Now that's still not a fuller. That's still a nail, Nick. It's just a long pole. If, if, if let's be clear on what you're saying, Nick. Are you do you prefer a crescent Nick over a long pole? Or are you talking about like a true fuller? Yeah, I guess that would be a good question because I would I would have called that a fuller. I mean, I, it is a long pole, but. Like this is a hole. So yeah. that's a very like that's not even a modern traditional. You know, yeah. that's but it's a fantastic. slip joint knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying anything negative. I'm just saying the 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 philosophy of that knife and its design is different from the philosophy of my knives. What would you call that then? Still a long pull? I not really, because a long pull to me is kind of like i mean I, I got as close to a long pull as i could with that but i'd still probably call that a fuller you know but we're just kind of assigning whatever words you want to it at this point when you look at it i guess it's just a shadow but it almost looks like it's darker on the inside yeah it's just they are darker because of the like look at the inside of this they're like gray inside right but I think that might just be the light. Yeah, no, that see, it's either that know. or it's scale from heat tree. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, Nick wanted to see a nip. Here you go. There's a nip. Oh, I thought you. the type of party we were having was about to change. <laughs> yeah, here, got two nips. Oh, two nips. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm glad you appreciated the swedge detail because I think, from what I understand, they had a hell of a time <laughs> executing that swedge, man. Yeah, that dude, I love that swedge. That thing it, really stands out to me. It cuts in, it goes, it has two angles. Yeah, the like transition here. Then, Yes. The way it looks on the spine and then the way it looks here both just really catch my eye. You got it. You you revealed it well in your video. I yeah, it's always the way you showed it off. Desktop, you can really, you know. Uh Javier, you you literally just use it as an eraser. Um I have it right here. I'll show you. So I don't have to make a video. Um so you just take your blade, right? And you just literally rub it like an eraser and i would test a little area to make sure you don't mess up your finish because depending on the finish like if you have a hand satin or something like that it could change the finish a little bit i've had really good luck with it the only thing i've really noticed it jack up more than anything is like a bead blast um because it kind of cuts through that bead blast it'll leave it a, a little bit odd but you literally just erase the rust it's that simple Let's see here. Yeah, distance of nail nick to pivot is of high importance. Exactly. The farther away from the pivot, the more leverage you get. And so if you have a stiff spring and you have your nail nick too close to the pivot, it's that much harder to use the nail nick to open the knife. How many times you cut yourself learning to do a slip joint one-handed? Ian, it's only been a couple times, honestly, where I've got myself pretty bad. Um, the first... I guess it was. No, it wasn't the first. I bought a custom Lanny's clip from Enrique Pena probably like 2016, 17, something like that. And I had this like antique yellow uh, paper micarta that I think he found more of because I just saw a post. He had like four of his custom flippers in that material, but I digress. And I gatored my hand with that thing and it was not good. 
Um, <clears throat> but I don't know. Some people really struggle with it. I mean, I have big hands and I think, you know, I, my hands are reasonably strong. What one handing it? Yeah. So I, I think more, what's up, Troy, more technique than anything. I do this move more than most. I push it down there and then I kick it like that. When I try to do it your way, I really struggle with it. Mostly because my hand must be smaller than yours because to get enough leverage to really push it down, I need to be up high. Yeah. And then the blade's going to get me. So I'm always worried about that. So I try to come down, but then look, my thumb's only like here. It's where a your full thumb stretch. is probably halfway up the blade. So I'm I'm at the bull. I'm just above the bolster line, which on this knife is fine. And I'm up here. Yeah. See where my thumb is? Yeah. And so I have to get all the way up here. And now I'm like cramping, literally. So I just <laughs> do this, you know, and I push it from here. And then I slide down and then I close it. Yeah. See, and my, I, I'm afraid to do that because that's not the technique I've built. So that's just a testament to like, you got to get brave. You got to practice. If anything, yeah, I find this a... to be safer because you're less likely to have anything in the path. The only thing that can happen is sometimes I'll, after I pop it down, I'll quickly like slip my finger back and sometimes <laughs> I'll shave off a section. Nice. But because the knives are so damn thin, usually it just like strips off a section of skin, doesn't even cut me. DNA you know? sample. But for the most part, I'm doing this. Like, these yeah. are my two hand fidgets, which is why I think they're more fidgety than any knife because they keep both of my hands busy. So I've had just about every type of knife through my hands, and it's always been the slip joints for me as far as the interaction with them. You know, like you, you think when you're a kid, especially like, oh, the switchblade is where it's at. The double action out the front all Dude, day long, worse, chink, 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 chink. It's really not as satisfying after a little while as you kind of hoped. That's been my experience. Yeah. You know, and flicking well, them open. I mean, I, I, I like it, but I always come back to just there's more to this instead of just right. one thing. It's like. Push it, push it, push it, jump. Push it, push it, jump. Totally. Um, it comes down to like what I'm doing though. Like, so if I'm eight, if I'm like watching something or sitting, it's so easy to just sit there and, and slip join it all day. But if I'm like on a computer or something, I can usually escape one hand for a second. And then it's nice to have a little flipper or flicker to have at your side, you know. So it depends on what moment you're in. You want to see something gnarly, dude? Concept sent me this knife. Look at this fucking monster, dude. From... I think I KC had one on his live stream. That is, yeah, man. What that thing is crazy. The it's alligator. A four, I was measuring in the video and I was like, it's four and a half. And then I was like, did I just say four and a half? Like this thing, that's a six inch ruler. The blade is four, yeah, four point six inches. That's a big blade. Packs into the handle pretty well. Fucking ten inch knife. I hate this fucking flipper tab though. They didn't jimp it. Like, what are you doing? Mm. Just seems odd. But yeah. <sighs> Let's see. What else can we do here? What up, Donnie? Yeah, Donnie's in the house. Donnie. Uh, so wait, we didn't go through all the versions, did we? So I'll just roll through them real quick. Yeah. Dark matter blue with the, the belt of satin, the satin of belt. Pop, and pop. we have the ultimate ultim polished. The ultimate has, pioneer. Yeah, the ultimate. Ultimate. And this yeah, is... uh I've made that happen. joke more than once. <laughs> it's played out by now. Played out to Check death. Check my titles on any ultimate knife. 
Or is the <laughs> ultimate. Then we have Plain Jane. Okay. That's looking good, dude. It, it is. Plain Jane with belt with a uh, hand satin is tough to beat. Yeah, and this and with that design, it really looks good. Yeah, it's classy, is what it is. It's just got classic, classic lines. And I'm really pleased with how they're maintaining the swedges because man, like you miss once, you know, you, you kind of break that line in between the swedge and the primary bevel. And I'm sure they screw a blade up every once in a while doing that in production. And then we've got call it black, black, black jigged. Oh shit. I haven't even seen this one. How did I know it? Maybe the lighting? I just thought it was uh, gray. That's all black. Yeah, black, black, black. All okay, DLC. Dude. My bad. I missed that in the video. I don't think I mentioned that one. That's all right. This is I, think I just said jigged. Have you tried to get them to do the uh, the like mirror DLC or like a belt satin under it? Not yet. I think a mirrored a mirrored DLC would look sick on one of those. Do they mirror them first and then coat them? Presumably, I, is that how they do it? I think so because that's how they do the satins, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. I think uh, and then CKF course, did it on an Evo at one point. Bring up a picture, and then we've got uh, the one you chose, Toxic Storm, and it's been a while. It's been since last November since we had Toxic. Since we did the cyborg, cyborg, yeah, and that was probably one of the most popular you've. you've the done, pink, right? the pink. Was the really though? I thought the toxic ended up kind of taking up it over. No, I can't remember. I, uh, you know what? Like pretty much, they were all good. Dark matter orange killed it. Dark matter orange was the sleeper on that one. So can you see this? Yeah. So the handle has this polished DLC and then it has the bark pattern and then the blade has the belt satin. But I'm not sure if this one actually has... I think they definitely did one with a mirrored... Man, they take some good pictures too. I'll tell you what. It must have been the handle that... How do you mirror something and bark it? I don't know. Let me try a... Uh... Mirror DLC. Oops. Oh, not videos. Images. Yeah, like uh, this would be a good version of it. Okay, yeah, look at that thing. Man. The only thing with Mirror is, well, they even, like, it's time-consuming, so... I'm sure it would be... It would cost more. Here's You're definitely it. gonna pay, <clears throat> and then like the time could be the bigger Not issue. Only do we have a brand new knife to show you? Who's blade? Hey, you can get a look at the blade. Show us the blade. Damn it! There you go. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, the one the way CKF did it, I think, was the best though. Um, but. Maybe I looked up the wrong one. But anyway, it's basically just a mirror polished DLC. So. Right. Uh, you know who does it? Doesn't uh, Rockstead do that? I don't Have know. you ever seen a Rockstead? I was going to tell you. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I'll show you. Is that the name of the model or the company? The company. You're going to you're gonna dig it. <clears throat> I gotta find it a good example, but that's not the DLC. I thought they did it to all of their blades. You're right about CKF. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh... Okay. This one, this is one. It's going to jump, though, as soon as I click on it. So I want to show you first. But 
See that over here? Oh, yeah. Or that. Those are interesting. Or that. That's how Rockstead ships it. Like, it's fucking crazy. What, what just happened? Fingerprint magnets. I wonder if the DLC. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to fingerprint for sure. But, yeah, it's really cool. I, I just think it'd be worth checking out. I don't know if it's possible, but. Yeah, Paul's like, my man doesn't know Rockstead. Paul, I'm more of a slip joint guy, dude. And being left handed, I have all, you know, I've typically trended towards left handed locking knives, which are few and far between. So I'm, I'm always behind the curve on that stuff. Check this thing out, dude. I got this from NJT Hand Power. It's a haptic coin. Wow. Is that Timascus? So make it focus a little better. It's Zerkutai. Whoo, boy. And look then at that. it's flamed and etched. Gosh. It's fucking gorgeous, dude. That is legit. Yeah. And it's fucking fidgety as hell, too. Don't lose that thing. <laughs> dude. You know what's funny, though? 150 bucks, maybe. Really? Yeah, he's in China. But he makes yeah. He makes custom uh, fidget stuff. One man shop. Actually, it might be two guys. I have one in Mokutai too, but this Zerkutai looks fucking epic. And it's yeah, this is my one hand fidget right here. Especially if I'm like somewhere that I don't want to be walking around flicking a knife. That nice thing sounds like it's pretty loud. No, oh, it's loud as shit. And yeah. I have it in a Lancelot leather coin slip. That is literally a little. And I was rocking. Uh, I was rocking his slip. He made me this for the bear a while ago. Fits the Pioneer perfectly. It sure does. Troy just shipped the uh, the uh, slip for this. It's true home is on the way, but this slip is great for like. When I don't have a slip that's made for the knife, this will fit a bunch of stuff. Um, I usually use this or, you know, you know me, I usually use a clip slip, but I tried mm -hmm. this first and it fit. Usually they don't fit because this is a little bit smaller, you know. I don't know if you yeah. saw the teaser on uh, <clears throat> Troy's Instagram, but we've got another custom Jack Wolf branded Northwoods leather drop coming soon. What's the uh, build? Check it out, dude. Check out Troy's IG. You want me to pull it up? Yep. Build a little hype. I think we're going to do it next Friday. How many you got? Not many. He can only do so many, you know, one at a time, yeah. custom styles. We've got... Um, the best slips in the goddamn game. Um, okay, so you got ghost leather. Looks like red ghost leather with the white wax. And the and black, black stitch. Thread. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yep. Dude. So right now we're doing, we've got three sizes that we've established that fits the whole line. We yeah. had to kind of standardize on three sizes, small, medium, large. And that's excluding the gunslinger, which has its own right. slip size. And so the majority of the knives fit mediums. So the first time we did mediums and larges with the blue buttero or butero, with the uh what color stitch should we do on that white and now our cream or something and so now we're doing smalls and mediums in these and the smalls will work good for the laid backs that people just bought um and the mediums fit damn near everything so the medium is the appropriate size for the pioneer okay but I'm excited yeah. for those. I've never owned any ghost leather, so I can't wait to rock it and wear it in. Dude, ghost leather is the tits. So I have just right here. I, mean, I have a bunch of it. Shout out to Troy. Um, this is my favorite, probably. This is wow. uh, whiskey. Butera. But dude, look at how it, look at that on the knife right there. So that's whiskey ghost leather. Just look at that shit. So it's yeah. So the color underneath is called whiskey, yeah. and then you have and then yes, ghost leather, and it's the white ghost leather because they have black and black. white. Depends on the wax they put on. Troy, correct me if I'm wrong about any of this shit. Um, 
But I find personally the white tends to show the patina a lot more quickly where the black still does for me because I, I kind of, I don't baby them. You know what I mean? They're in and out of pocket. They're getting chucked everywhere. So mine wear in pretty quick, but the white tends to wear a little bit quicker. This is a whiskey with uh, the white. That's fucking perfect for this knife. Yeah, so Urban, this was an Urban EC one he did. And then I have the ghost leather. This is yellow Butero Ooh, with the black. That looks good. And that was for my Limoncello feel good. Yeah. And that, I mean, I've probably carried this knife more than anything since I got it. Um, but you can see a lot of wear on there. It looks really good. Yeah, Troy just made a comment, and he said, uh, the white ghost leathers tend to rub off better, show more color than the black. And what was cool about the white is when he burned that stamp, that Jack Wolf stamp into the leather, it made that the wolf head red inside yeah. the white frame. That shit looks good. Yeah, it I'm definitely looks those. sick. And you can also force patina it. Like, you can literally, like, scratch it if you want and force it. Um, I find it happens pretty quick for me and then it like it's sort of like certain wear areas like you can see where the knife's yeah. going in and out and whatnot um but yeah those are the two oh here this is a blue one this is blue with uh black on top mm. and then purple stitching this one hasn't worn quite as much but i probably haven't carried this one quite as much as the other one so it makes yep. sense but yeah, I would say the white probably wears uh, the most. For this one, he did um, green. So it's going to be green Butero. And then can't remember if it's black or white wax. Ooh. And then I think we did yellow stitching to match the green with the yellow. Bro, you your slip collection at this point is fire. Dude, my slip collection is out of control. But I'll tell you, man, you, I, you got you to gotta thank Troy a little bit, man. I, I swear that my interest in slip joints is strengthened, like, at least by half because of his work. Like, Dude, you, me and Troy have had the conversation on multiple occasions, like, we're we're like a match made in heaven and we didn't yeah. even know it you know <laughs> and it's like a so combo good. dude people like it uh, it's just one of those things we're like we didn't know it when we both started doing our thing but when you when we mix our dna <laughs> people really like the results mm -hmm. so dude it's awesome i mean we've yeah I, I think i know because i've talked to him we're both super appreciative of uh well, and also, man, you've done more than anybody else to get the word out on the combo because you're truly enthusiastic about it because it's awesome and you know it and you're not afraid to tell people. And then when people get them, they're like, holy shit, I love this thing. And then they want one for every knife. That's, you got to have one for every knife. I, I yeah. literally feel like naked. I feel like the knife is naked until it has a Northwood slip for it, you know? Me and Donnie were talking about it today, like – so I provide, I mean, there's a provided slip and it's quality. Oh, it's right? a good slip, dude, for sure. And, and for a lot of people who aren't most know, people that's neck most deep people. into this stuff, like we are, they don't even know that these custom leather slips exist. Let's just say, or if they did, they, they'd have to really see it. But, but for the person who's really into this and really likes that, little something extra it's nice to have the option i was telling donnie i feel like it's kind of like skiff bearings you know like that's comes another regular too yeah it comes with regular bearings and they work great but if you just want something that's more refined then that option is there it's pretty close alice the nip is a little bit tall longer and a little bit uh taller i would say but it's pretty close. Yeah, I'm super stoked to uh, get the nip slip in um, solely because I'm hoping I can I can do something. We can do something with Troy on that one because I haven't 
you know, we haven't had a slip joint yet of our own that we could, you know, do some kind of collaboration with him on. I would love to do that. I'm only nipple deep into it. <laughs> Nip deep is fine. Hell yeah, Donnie. Pick one up at Blade West, baby. You going to be there? Are you going to be there? Oh, yeah, he'll be there. Uh, oh, that's right. You guys are out west. It's not too bad for you. Well, we do every Blade show. I mean, it's guaranteed. I got a that's booth sick. this year. Sick. There's not very many booths. Did you see the floor map? No, I haven't had a set a chance to look at it we're we're gonna upgrade to a booth for blade show next year or try at least we're on the list for it yeah i was gonna say you better make your desires known i yeah i already did all that right after blade yeah so we'll see man those shows like i saw that coming a mile away dude that first year 2021 where we met yeah. um like when you could because it was right after covid Right. And the knife market was on fire, right? And because it was the year after COVID, they had openings. I just knew right away. I'm like, these openings are not here to stay. Like, this is the chance to get with these shows because as soon as everybody stops being afraid, this thing's going to fill up. And dude, it happened. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. Does Ben wish he'd had picked at least one combo that was consistent through all the models? Um, not really. I mean, I started doing that with the micarta. Wait, what do you mean? I think he's talking about like a certain cover material that. But you in. do. You have. Uh... But I don't have the same color. But that. I that was going to say, I, yeah, but I mean, in the beginning with the micarta that was happening, so I had guys building like a black micarta collection or a green micarta collection, which, yeah. you know, I would suck disappointing those guys when I got rid of the micarta, but, yeah, but you disappointed 12 people. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm so like disappointing. Like, you, you know, you, uh, you adjusted on the fly, you know, you figured out quick that I'm the market for this, not, right. not the traditional guy. You know, when you started, you thought you would be getting the traditional guy. You probably get some of those guys, but mostly you're drawing in people like me. The hundred percent. And I think you made the right moves when that when you noticed that you shifted gears. I mean, look at it now. You're doing fucking DLC and and Ultim and shit. You probably never thought you would be doing. No, and frankly, I'm having a lot more fun with this stuff, and <clears throat> it's where. So no, I mean I I don't I don't want to have the same thing available every time. I'm trying to make everything as different as possible. I'm trying to give a really custom knife experience. Um, yeah, the micarta was good, and you know what? Had they been popular, I would have had no regrets continuing to do them. I would have, as long as the carbon fiber was also popular. If they were the same popular, I would have ended up like three and two. Probably three. You just sneak in a my card every once in a while to prove your point. Yeah, exactly. I may, you know, just ordering that stuff from that manufacturer. They want you to buy just an absolute ton of it. Yeah. And is that Norplex? <clears throat> is that the brand or mm -hmm. Norplex Ultrex? And they want you to buy. Like I haven't talked to them in a while, but I've had other. I've talked to other people who've talked to them, and they want you to buy an ungodly amount of that stuff. And it's like, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to tie up that much cash on my card that could sit for five years. Right. You know? So feel good gunslinger. Well, the gunslinger good? is. Um, I think he means a feel good locking knife. Is yeah, that what you mean? What mean? Yeah. I think the midnight would translate better than the feel good. Just because you have a little more meat on it for a lock and all of that. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, it might not even translate because of how narrow it is at the top. Right. I'd have to scale it up for sure. It's the you only know, one I, that doesn't have a slip. Why don't you buy one of the ones from my website that has the doesn't need jack wolf stamp? No, it, well, not unless you put the pocket club in it, pocket clip plug in it, like a boss. Yeah. I only do that when a knife makes sense to do it. Like this clip is really good. I don't really. I feel you. Well, and it's, you know what, it's there so people can choose. I, I am actually surprised at how many of those leather slips we've sold. That means it's at least guys who have given it a shot. I don't know if they went with it long term or they went back to the clip, but it was like, 
I don't know, 15% of them or something. Dudes bought those leather slips from us. And it's not a cheap slip. I mean, 40 bucks, you know, it's an investment. You don't just buy a $40 slip plus shipping if you're not going to at least try it. 15% you know? of what? Of the total production run. Oh, wow. Yeah, what? dude. It wasn't like 10 guys. It was like, how many of those do we sell? More than 60. You know? So I was like, geez, we sold a lot of these slips. And so I'm kind of stoked about that because, yeah, I don't know. You have those thoughts like, is this even worth doing this pocket clip plug? I mean, it was for me because that's how I wanted to carry it. But right. I was like, am I going to be the only fucking guy carrying this thing like this? Yeah, but no. I feel you. Uh, Jim, we ordered more of the mesh just last week, paid the deposit. So we have a, we did a small run this time. Because we're paying for everything up front right now. Um, and we have a lot of stuff we want to do. So I think we ordered like 350 or something. And 50 of those are uh, dealer exclusive. That's going to be pretty cool. But we ordered three new versions. And we're calling it a MASH 2.5. Because we didn't change enough to like, you know, call it a 3 or whatever. We just added pivot collars. And then we did... I don't know if I should tell you the versions we did. Maybe it would be cool to keep it a surprise for one. So I'll wait. But if you know us, you'll probably figure it out. Yeah. I've seen some questions. So Kent says that he carries his gunslinger in the slip right on. And then I saw something Troy said that made me raise an eyebrow. i seen pics of people rocking the gunslinger in the slips with the clip on still. That's yeah. interesting to me. That's people just buying stuff to buy shit. Probably. Or they're too afraid to take the knife apart, maybe. It's like, send it to yeah. me, I'll do I it mean, for it you. A, dude, it's a fucking process. I mean... It is. It is. It and is. It, I didn't make that easy. And it's for the love of the aesthetic. It's a good clip. That's why... It's, it's, like, and it's a very low... I mean, it's a low clip. Like it, 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 There's nothing... There's no reason to not use this clip, in my opinion. Yeah, unless you don't like having a pocket clip, a knife clipped on your pocket. That's for right. me. I don't. It but it's a nuts, locking but... knife, so it, it, you know I. It's a I knife. Have an exception <laughs> to that. I have the uh, the Denka here, but this literally does not have a clip. So like, I had to get a slip for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Troy, how much did you love making this slip? He had to make it like three times Man, to get it to fit. Because look, dude, it has. A fucking square on it. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it's. It, I call it the thumb square. Uh, but it, dude, it flicks so good off of that square. I bet it does. I love this thing. It doesn't cut the best. That's my only gripe with this knife. I've no because I've actually fucking used it. And well, look uh, at how short that bevel yeah, is, dude. <laughs> exactly. And <laughs> That's they a chisel. They did a shot a shallow hollow grind. They should have went deeper on that, but they probably couldn't. No, I mean that is designed to look good before it's designed to cut good, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's not that thick. I mean it's okay, but I've noticed when carrying it, it doesn't cut as well. So I haven't been carrying it as much. It was like my favorite knife for a while. <laughs> Troy so said I, I hate that it. knife. <laughs> it's more like ten people, Delta. There's 10 of them uh, with the plug-in, the butt plug-in. Nice. The clip and matching backspacer and plug was such a great idea. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate that, man. Clearly inspired from... Uh... From yeah, what? right on, Kent. I was going to say, like, me geeking out on the stuff the Knife Modders has been doing for the last couple years is what inspired me on the Anno. I thought that just looks so good. And I, I feel like it makes sense to like match everything, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's nothing original, but I'm just saying that's where I was inspired. But the plug, I like that you matched it with the plug too. Yeah, and that was a gamble too, because you're like, man, is that too much? You know, you get you ask yourself but I all knew, these questions. I do wish you had just fucking put a lefty plug on there. No, we talked about that. I know, but I wish you, I wish you would have done it still. 
talked about then, it doesn't mean my thoughts. Well, I explained it, right. Well, <clears throat> for the less than 10% of people who are never going to use that thing, they're going to have that plug on their show side. But it'll look cool. It'll look good. No, it's too much. For that you. knife is not designed for left-handed people. It's adaptable for left-handed people. It's designed for right-handed people. Man, the left-handed right. the left-handability of that knife, in my opinion, is removing the pocket clip, putting it in the slip, and now it is more appropriate for a lefty. Mm. In my opinion. Yeah. I mean, your opinion is the one that matters here on this one. Right? <laughs> I was going to say, usually it doesn't mean <laughs> shit, but right now it's kind of valid. <laughs> Nips and plugs. Come on, guys. Yeah. <clears throat> Kev says uh, Ben hates us, his own kind. What I would rather do, uh, Gunslingers, we're going to get more first half of next year. My productions are booked out until then, but I got more in the queue. Um, I, I get asked for more Gunslingers. Almost every single day. Did like, they give you a crap. number on lefties, a minimum? Um, I'm negotiating right now. Right now, it's a little too high. How many? Um, how many came through on your pre-order? What was the uh, final answer? Not enough. I think we sold like 40 lefties, but we only had to order 50. Well, if you count the, if you count, um, Austin picked up like eight. Or something on so, top of the 40 or of the 40 on top okay hold on let me check the numbers I'll get check. <clears throat> now look if i could make 50 i'll tell you right now if they would do 50 yeah 50 i would is a do no 50. brainer i think i'm not at 50 with them right now so yeah you're probably at like 300 not that many fortunately but i'm certainly wouldn't make 300 i just wouldn't do it flat out yeah, it's no, you're going to I mean, look at Euro. <laughs> He's, he sells everything, and he ordered, I think, like 500 of the Axons. He still has them. I mean, it's just – It's unfortunate. It's I, you know, here's what I where I'm at on that is, like, it's if 20, I can negotiate with them a smaller number, I'd do it. And – or – 44. That's pretty good, the order, And then the eight from – Oz so thing. theoretically, what if they told you that I probably minimum ordered was, sixty or something? If your minimum was one hundred and fifty, would you do lefties? Fuck no. Exactly. It's too I mean, many, dude. It's. I promoted. It's a that. bad business. It's a I bad business that decision for months in the lefty group on, everywhere, and. The, you know, there's so many awesome lefties. They showed up. They they wanted to support it, but I, I'm a lefty, and I'll be honest. It It's one of those vocal minority things. What you have to understand is it's not just – it's not just like lefties talk a lot, but they don't show up, right? That's something people say or I've said before. It, you got to look at it this way. You're talking about 10%, right, of, of the, the population. Community. Yeah. Right. So let's just let's just say it's 10% of the knife community. So now I have you know, I got to sell 1000 knives. Am I going to sell 100 of them in lefty? No, because what you're not understanding is that's 10%. That doesn't mean just because there's 10% lefties they're all buying one. They still all have their own preferences. So now you have that 10% that likes worn cliffs or whatever, or they prefer clip points or they want a slip joint or they want. So your, your window, like your, your market just shrinks down. And what I've noticed with lefties more than anything is they are heavily geared towards custom knives because they That's can't they get, can get them. They can't, they couldn't like historically could not get right handed or left handed production knives so we've been pushed to basically buy custom knives. And so the lefty custom market is interesting. Um, you'll have, you know, makers who will make one off lefties here and there. And that's kind of what lefties are into. So you have a lot of lefties that just don't even look at production, even if it is left hand. Right. So I just get, think the pool of taste people caviar, is so you're not small. Eating... Yeah, dude, you make a good point. Of the ten so percent, you're probably getting ten percent. Yeah, I would probably do a hundred, 
But that's as far as I would go. And it would still take me probably like six months to run through a hundred. Yeah, I mean, at that point. I would say I have a decent like following or whatever of left-handed people. You would think that if anybody's <laughs> going to sell a left-handed knife, it would probably be me, right? Like I don't have the reach that like Vero does or whatever, but um but your name is Lefty EDC. Yeah, so but like I just a we saw left-handed knives and we sold 50 of them. So yeah. thank God. I mean, that's what the minimum is. That's why we did it. If it would have been any higher, like Kubi, they have to do a whole new run. So it's 300. I was just like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna sit on those for years. Right. And the other thing for me is I like right-handed knives. Like I don't have well, a problem because you with can it. make them work. Well, I actually, I really, because I carry two knives, right? One of which is a slip joint. I could put this in my front left pocket, and then I carry the right-handed knife in my back left. And that back left pocket literally makes it left-handed. Like, it's left-hand carry because, like, here, wait, that one's set up lefty, but I'm going to put the knife here, right? It's a, The blade is against the, the seam, so it's safe. It's a right-handed clip, but it's on my left side. So I pull it out with my left hand. It's basically carrying it lefty. Like I, so I've just figured that out, and that changed the whole game for me. I stopped <clears throat> caring about reversible clips and all that shit. I can just carry right. right-handed knives. But you realize that you've adapted a right-handed knife to suit you. Versus yeah. like most guys don't carry in their back pocket that way to achieve the goal. Like, well, they so in other words, try it. I never thought to try I know, it. but I'm saying that's a workaround, which is fine. Sure. But so circling back to my thought process on the whole thing was the gunslinger is a right-handed knife yeah. designed for right-handed people that can be used effectively by left-handed people in a compromised manner. Or with the clip plug, you know, it's why there's no extra clip plug on the other side for the 10% of the 10% of people who will find that shit convenient. Right. Sorry, doesn't work for me. Don't mean to be rude. That's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I think, I think it's not for me. It wouldn't be a big enough detriment to the design. First of all, <clears throat> you some it. of my other. Not all of my models have symmetrical bolsters. So you would have to have a second, you'd have to have two clip plugs. A right-handed and a left-handed. Well, and a not clip on this plug. one, but not on that one, but on future models. I thought about that. So anyway, it just wasn't wasn't fun. I mean, you thought of reasons not to do it. <laughs> well, I, I, you know me, I overthink everything to the like ultimate yeah. degree. It's like I, no, I try not to leave fair. any stuff. I totally on understand your point and I I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I still right. I would have done it. That's all I'm saying. Fair enough. Fair but enough. That doesn't mean I'm right. Yeah, there's no right or wrong. There's just a decision. That's what right. me and KC were talking about. I mean, there's about no right or day. wrong. There just is at this point. There just <laughs> is. There just is. And, no and, more and left ed dealers. <laughs> it is not a big enough deal, you know. No. So you want a left-handed clip? Just drill the bitch out. <laughs> yeah. You should see what the Todd. You should see what the recess looks like for the clip and the plug. Like you ain't just drilling it. It's crazy how that pocket, dude. That pocket clip is insane. If you look at the backside of it, it kind of has like a tube that sticks out and it's threaded. Like the milling yeah. on that pocket clip is bananas. Yeah, that's one way they can um, seat it better without any wiggle. There's no wiggle on that bad boy. That sucker fits in like a key. It's amazing. <clears throat> and I, I really wanted, like, that whole thing could have been a lot easier with a screw head, you know, above the surface. But I was like, nope. Got to be inside. Lefty ain't right. I'll tell you what, uh, some of the most creative people I've ever met are left-handed I mean, there's something to say about left-handed people. I'm not just trying to toot my own horn here, but <clears throat> you meet people and then you see them right, and you're like, I fucking knew it, you know. No. Um, 
and we probably talked about this on a live stream before, but this blew my mind one time, dude. So I'm at uh, college, ASU, Arizona State, my freshman year. I started as an architecture major. And you have to take this lecture hall class, like 101. There you go. Great, Dane. Link in the chat. Sorry, go ahead. So, so I go into this lecture hall, and there's probably 300 kids in this gigantic lecture hall. And I shit you not, 50% of that room is like reaching around their right-handed desk, taking notes. And I was like, I've never seen this many left-handed people in one place before, ever since. Crazy. Dude, those desks are the fucking worst. Man. Dude, our whole lives with that bullshit. Yeah. I mean, still, with like pens and shit, like I always have to get the quick dry or the ballpoint, you know? Oh, yeah. Hey, Samson, if your filler tab is giving you problems, it shouldn't do that, dude. So if you want to send me an email at support at jackwolfknives.com, I can send you a new filler tab. Maybe we just have a out of spec issue going on there. Um, and also, you know, a dab of Loctite might not be a bad idea also. I mean, typically it doesn't need it, but I don't. I don't like to hear about that. I could try to help you out there if, if you're having a problem. Did you get this one? Not like for another two says, no, they do not all get the same number of knives. I mean, you know, that, that wouldn't make sense because guys like DLT and Blade HQ sell a lot more knives than the small mom and pops. I start, I start everybody out the same, and then based on performance, I adjust their quantities basically. Yeah, and I mean it makes sense depending on what they want to order. And... Yeah, yeah. I mean everybody gets the same mix. I don't let people pick and choose colors. Um, I sell by the case or half case. Six of huh. fourteen presents. See that kind of shit's interesting to me. I feel like it's that's, just. I don't know. I think that's statistically outside of what would be expected like that just means that left-handed people are presidential bro yeah oh that's funny we should run we should run right uh what happened to grady and the don't tread on me guy so he's talking about, oh, um, talking about chris and kyle yeah, Chris and Kyle. Yeah, they just uh, moved on with their lives. I don't know. Chris, um, he had another baby, and then, I don't know. Kyle has, like, five Is kids, doesn't he? Kyle, uh, yeah. Well, I think he had four. Might have been more. Um, and he just kind of, I don't know. He had a thing where he was trying to buy this house, and it didn't go well. And I think he sort of realized maybe it had to do with his knife collecting or time he spent on knife stuff and i think he kind of just thought his priorities should change and he and he did that which is cool man most guys, miss those guys though miss those guys yeah and most guys don't do youtube forever because as kevin will tell you a lot of time invested and it gets harder and harder to justify it as your life goes on and your other responsibilities are fighting for your time for sure yeah, it's been tough lately for me just because of the move and trying to settle in and all this stuff. But for me, you know, YouTube is kind of interwoven with my other stuff like Devo. So it it all goes together. And I just really enjoy it. So I try to make it happen. Um, well, I feel like that's almost a prerequisite now for someone to have a successful channel because the volume of content has to be significant so you better enjoy it because you're gonna be spending some time fuck yeah and you know it it pays off enough for me to keep doing it too yeah i mean you've taken an intelligent approach and utilizing it like you, you're 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 getting a what's the word i'm looking for you maximize your value for the time you spend because you have a business that you educate and promote with your to your audience using the investment you put in creating entertainment and informational content for people faux show faux show um 
speaking of the people, I do have a giveaway. Um, Blue bag in it. I have a patch from Obi, some stickers and stuff. And then I uh, just reviewed this guy. This is the O Knife Heron R1. And I got to say, when I first saw this box, I was like, eh, desert, whatever, you know, D2. All of drab. But, dude, I fucking love this thing. Um, I don't know what it is. There's just something about the knife that is, I don't know. You ever just get a knife in hand? You're like, shit, I like this. That's just what happened with this one. Um, so I'm going to give this away. But I think it's a fantastic knife. So whoever wins this. I hope you feel the same way. Hey, Jason, I see your message. Definitely hit me up, bro. I, I, just like you, the time slipped through my fingers. Uh, Jason is uh, local to me, and we we're going to hook up for some lunch. Nice. Jason, did you ever get your AC figured out? I believe you were uh, the guy who had your AC go out. And... That shit sucks around here. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. It's starting to get nice around here, I, relatively nice. Like that's really I walked nice. my here. yeah, dude. I walk I walked my dog this morning and it was sixty eight degrees. Granted, it was at six a.m., but yeah, that's nice. nice dude. Yeah, I it's been like, like it was probably like sixty eight like all day today here. It's oh, nice. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to be able to sit outside again. Kind of sucks though because we moved in and the house has a pool and it's like can't fucking use it too cold i'm trying to get it clear it's fucking annoying the shit out of me i'm learning like everything about pools all of a sudden which is not good for me because i'm one of those like paralysis OCD. by analysis guys you know dude i have a pool guy that's the end of it for yeah. me yeah this is above ground though so like oh. they don't fuck with it man i probably could call like a mom and pop pool guy or something no just but... just learn how to do it dude it's just that's what i'm trying and I the take the water and... there, and they're like, it's perfect. I'm like, well, why is it, like, cloudy? Like, fucking, you know? And they're like, try that, try this, nothing. I'm like, god damn it. So, but it doesn't really matter because I can't even fucking swim in it right now. So, like, I just need to get them to help me close it, and then I'll, in the spring, I'll be an expert. You know what I'm saying? Does yours have a heater? Fuck no, dude. Well, my aunt in Michigan has an above ground pool, and I think she can heat hers. They so make I don't know like they solar powered heaters and shit like that, but I hear heaters are expensive. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I, I would know. fuck with that. We've got a gas, we can heat our pool, but we barely ever do because it's, it's a, it ain't cheap. Right. I don't, I don't know. I don't really see the point in that, really. If the water's not warm enough, then it's probably not hot enough to be in it. There's like a window of time where you still want to use a damn thing, but because it's cold at night, like it's the nighttime hours that affect you. Like the daytime hours are good and you want to be right. in there, but because the sun goes down earlier and you're you getting exposed. In Phoenix, to you wouldn't have that issue. It Dude, it gets, fun. I mean, we have these 30 to 40 degree swings, bro. So it can be, you know, 80 degrees and be 50 or 40 at night all through the winter and that's a lot of nighttime hours and it just makes the water too cold right but all summer you can use it and then the water gets so damn hot it's like not even refreshing can you get a cooler <laughs> oh my god you're like oh it's like swimming in sweat probably just gotta put some like fresh water in or something but well you got a thing that circulates that i think yeah i don't know i just I mean, if it's affordable enough, I might get one, but I don't know. I'm not looking at it like I just want to make the pool water look good and then fucking use it when it's nice enough to use it. Your Probably. kid, your your kid will love it, dude. That's the thing. yeah, yeah. We we got in it one night. Like we moved in Saturday. Me and her got in Sunday, and it was fun. It was already cold, like, but I got used to it pretty quick. Um, and probably I don't know if we'll be able to get in it again, so just need to close it up and then I'll uh I'll get her done next spring. Um, uh, <laughs> pool videos, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. You might see some pool videos, 
You might see some John Deere videos. You might see some uh, tool videos. <laughs> like, dude, I kitted my whole garage out with, with fucking Milwaukee power tools and shit. Been a blast fucking. But I've just been spending money left and right on house shit. So I want to buy a pool vacuum. That's the next thing I want. Samson, it does get into the 30s at night in the winter which is cold for here, but I mean, I'm from Michigan. Like I, I experienced cold for many years, but I, I can say it does get pretty cold at night to where you don't want to be outside sleeping. Pool leaders that work on propane or expensive to run convert to a hundred pounds tank. Oh, yeah. Mine's hooked up to natural gas. Yeah. You would think natural gas makes the most sense. Be the most affordable option. They make solar ones. I saw it at the pool store. Solar. That one probably would make sense for me. It's probably like a, you just, you hook it up and then you put that, you put panels out around the pool and you get sun from that bakes it in. And then you have a heater might work. I don't know how expensive it is, but that could be an option, I guess. Um, the lush is in production with concept. Supposed to be done the end of this month or early October. So as soon as we get those in, we'll uh we'll uh you'll see some stuff from traditional pocket knives. That's an exclusive with them. Uh, left handed pool videos. Yeah. I do not want to fuck with the vacuum, like the traditional vacuum where you gotta like plug it into the skimmer thing and like have all the hose and shit. Fuck that. I just want like a cordless vacuum robot thing. Chuck it in there and empty that shit. We got the crawler that crawls around the bottom of the pool. It's hooked to some kind of hose. Yeah. Well, that's basically the same thing, isn't it? Or, oh, yours is hooked to a hose. Yeah, it's connected to something. Yeah, you got to get the cordless one, dude. But it goes into the filter system and all that. Yeah, so all the shit in there is going through your filter. When you could just get it into a bucket and then clear it out. No, I mean, I don't know. I'll ask I guess you your pool mind. guy cleans it all out. I don't fuck with it. I don't know. I don't yeah. ever use it, bro. My kids use it. My wife uses it. I'm like, eh. I don't want to smell like chlorine and have to wash that shit out of my I love beard pools, and my. Dude, uh, I'm a fucking. <laughs> I love pools, man. Yeah, I want an in-ground pool pretty bad, but we'll see if Grab I. If I can ever afford to put one in or whatever, we'll see. You could go down the shovel rabbit hole, find the best EDC shovel, and dig yourself a pool and make yeah. videos about it. <laughs> make a pool? Dude. Yeah. Dude. Good idea. Lush and Nip, same month. Uh, Maybe. Big possibility. Yeah, for sure. Nip probably be first, though. Um, Coming up on six weeks with no AC. Home warranty company has blown me off. Been trying for two weeks to get through to them, and they're not getting back to me. Dude, I, I struggled one year with my home warranty company on a broken AC unit. I signed up with a new home warranty company as soon as that whole claim was over. I was pissed. Are those worth it? Uh, some years, no, and some years, absolutely. It just depends. How much I've, do you pay I've been, for it? I think it's like 600 bucks a year or something like that. That's but dude, I've had like ovens replaced. I've had refrigerators repaired. I've had all kinds of shit repaired. I've had air conditioning units. They repaired. cover most of it or they do, but man, they're like real strict about what's in their policy and everything. Um, hmm. But it, I, I continue to use it. I'm trying to think here <clears throat> on the homes I live in. I continue to use it. I used to like, when I moved into this house, I kept my other house and I had it rented out as an Airbnb. It didn't work in that situation because like you got a guest in there and shit needs to get fixed fucking immediately for them. You know, so that was just like you just pay cash for those. But then I had to sell that house to fund this business. Um, so partially fund this business, I should say. And then but for this house, yeah, I've been happy with it. And the one I'm using is called One Guard. I don't know if they're an Arizona thing. But uh, if you want to try someone different, uh, Jason, I'm using OneGuard. Hmm. Yeah, I think our realtor bought us a home warranty for a first year. That's common. That's what they do. They get you for your yeah. first year. So we'll see if we have to use it. We already had a fucking leak 
the downstairs bathroom and the, the toilet, whoever put it in when they did the floor, didn't like put in a spacer or something for the gasket around the toilet. So I don't know why it decided to leak after I took a shit the first time. But uh, we started getting like a drip down in the basement. And I called my plumber from back where we used to live. Luckily, he came out here. But it was like 500 bucks to have him fucking fix it. So probably would have been smarter to call that home warranty company. But I don't want to wait. Well, you know what? It just depends on the contractor. Like sometimes they're out in a day or two. It just depends. I mean, you can at least find out. Um, you know, the AC guys in Arizona in the summer, they just, they're, they're running all over the place for those like four or five months. And they're just hard to get a hold of anybody. Right. When do the new, go uh, I, we're aiming for next Friday, Samson. I don't see why it won't happen. We already got them in hand. I just got to put up the listings. Um, nice. so no, next Friday. Doesn't hit. the, uh, the cordless, robot vacuums do not hook up to your pump they're all contained you just drop it in you hit go it vacuums at the bottom you can get ones that go up the wall vacuum the water line and shit and then it'll dock on the side of the pool you take it out they give you like a hook to put on your pool uh pole you pull it out and then you just take it has like a filter bucket in it and you rinse that out you put it back in charge the robot and that's it. It doesn't hook up to the uh, pump. You definitely can get ones like what he has. That's what we had when I was a kid in Florida. We had the one that crawled around the bottom and it would hook up to your pump thing. And you have that fucking hose all around the pool while you're trying to fucking swim. Yeah, we just pull it out if we're swimming. But if yeah. we're not in there, he's just crawling but, uh, around sucking up dirt. But yeah, these robot cordless ones, they don't. you don't plug them in. They have ones that you plug in. Like they have long power cables, but they have battery ones now. Check it out. Look it up. There, I think there's one that I was looking at called Aper A I P E R Seagull Pro. It's like seven hundred bucks though. Funny thing is, the guy who came and sold me the John Deere, we were talking about pools, and he's like, "Dude, you gotta try this thing I got." And I'm like, "What is it?" And he's like, it's the, and he literally spells out the exact name I just said. And he's like, it's this vacuum thing. He's like, dude, I'm always skeptical of shit like this. It was $700, but it's the greatest fucking thing I ever bought for my pool. Like I would never not have one again. I was like, oh shit, dude, I want one. Don't you worry. Aper videos coming year. soon. See robot video coming up. Dude, I'll tell you what's the biggest burden or bane for my pool it's the fucking trees in the backyard that dump pollen yeah. all in that thing it's like good do Lord. you have a screen around it or no uh -uh. okay well then yeah like in florida we had a screen around the whole pool area so you, you never mean screen like it. over the water or you mean like a fence around it like we had a screen that was you know it was like a enclosed porch type thing. Oh no no no! My pool is just in the backyard, you know. Right. Ready Which for is nicer walk. for like the view and like when you're out there and shit. But if you have trees around it, it gets dumped on. Yeah, you know? dude. It's, dude it's, get. I'm telling you, get the robot vacuum, man. Get the robot vacuum. Uh, what part of Florida? I lived in Tampa. Uh, it was Palm Harbor. I was like eight and we moved back when I was 10 or something. It wasn't like I was there long. Lefty living large with a screened in pool. Is that, is that living large back in the you day? Do not, you do not see those in Arizona. I've never seen one out here it's, anywhere. It must be a Florida thing because alligators and shit. Like, yeah, oh, someone said shit. bugs too. Oh, yeah. Fucking bug, dude. Fucking banana spiders. Like, we were right up on a reserve and. You get fucked up. You walk in there. <laughs> you get fucked up just like with the. There used to be like these huge fucking puddles at the bus stop area. Like they would, we literally would, could like fucking swim in them when it got bad. And we'd be in there and it'd be fucking water moccasins and shit in there. Like 
shit was not gnar- yeah we didn't do it anymore after we noticed that shit but right um and there would just be gators walking around the neighborhood sometimes you had to just we had one get in our screened in area one time because the pool guy or somebody left the door open the screen door open and a gator like came in and uh i forget <laughs> who or what but somebody just like chased it out with a broom or something and it it was like fuck this and got out of there dude freaking dinosaur trying to swim in your pool not bugs crops no they're gators they're gators they're gators armadillo will mess up your lawn iguanas and shit they got armadillos in texas i know that yeah it's a florida thing for bugs oh you're talking about the screen thing talk about the screen yeah probably like um mosquitoes in the in the summer i don't know but we had it and it fucking helped a lot with keeping your pool nice and clean and shit but dude pools are fucking expensive man just in a week that i've owned one i've spent like 400 bucks and i i apparently have done nothing so (laughs) yeah they eat money yeah but whatever he's so not how much yeah samson the one thing i can tell you that's in the queue is that i can't tell you what's in the queue because i keep it a surprise that's part of the fun for me yeah um, i struggle with that part because i get excited tell and i fucking make videos about everything so it's hard you know yeah i mean whether or not it's a good idea or not i mean you can look at it either way but i enjoy it i think it's fun and, I think uh, it works for your situation where you drop something every month or every two months. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, everything right now, I'm about to jinx myself here to next Tuesday, but right now everything's on track to stick with the monthly drop schedule for a while. I was while. about to ask that if that. Yeah, it should be back on good. track. I mean, you know, something can go wrong at any time, but right. trying to iron out the kinks. We got rabbits in West Virginia that will Dude, have we have to gear up. There's so many cottontail rabbits in my neighborhood because I walk Oscar like first thing in the morning. Dude, the, like I don't know what it is with those things. Obviously, they multiply. That's what they're famous for. But yeah, so many of these little rabbits everywhere. I'm they like, these like rabbits. rabbits food for something. That's right. But yeah, dude, monthly would be cool to get back to because I. I always miss it when we skip a month or whatever. Uh, and it's always fun because, like, you know, I get the knife early in the month and I get to carry it for, like, a few weeks and really get to feel that knife out. And then by the time I'm doing the review and they drop, it's, like, almost time for another one. Right. It's just nice. It's like Christmas keep, all over again. Keep it flowing. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, fun, it's a good pace. You yeah, know, you definitely have a better handle on it. It also helps, I guess, that you use the same OEM for everything. But, like, sometimes we get – it's just timing sucks. Like, the way we we order stuff and whatever, we have it timed. We're like, this will come in, then this, and then this. And then it's like, bang, everything just, like, drops on us at once. Like, this year in April, we got hit with, like, four knives. It was crazy. And then it's like, do I want to sit on these? For months to like spread it out, no. Like I want to get our, I want to get my money back. Like I want to keep the business going. So you just want to drop everything. So definitely having like a monthly schedule is nice. Well, that was one of my prerequisites for an OEM was finding someone who could understand my vision and make it. You know, it's like this has to work for you because this is what. This is how I want right. to do this, you know. But them saying they'll do it and them actually correct doing it for <laughs> yeah. two years now is fucking impressive. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, but I mean, we do. I mean, like decisions are being made now for knives that are well into next year at this point. Like that's kind of like I don't know if that's a downside person. It's just the um reality of having a program like this is you've got to get out in advance and be making decisions and making deposits right. for shit that's out there. Well yeah and then the 
for me, the with that, the interesting thing is like with the nips, they just came in. I'm like X knives ahead already working on that, trying to decide on materials and whatever. And then you get a knife in and you're like, oh, I remember you. Like, this yeah, is great. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's always fun. Like, this one, this one really is like, damn, I forgot how fucking good this knife is. Lurking mode on. What up, Josh? How you doing, man? How you doing? <sighs> Excuse me. So, Samson, I didn't slip about the gunslinger next year because I've been asked so many times about it. I just decided to have an answer to that question because the demand has just been insane. Re order. Yeah, like th there's so many people asking for it. I just want to have an Are answer. Are you changing anything? That I'm not going to answer. Okay, so yes. Maybe. Um. Maybe I'm not. Sure you keep, keep the popular <laughs> ones and then add some different ones. You had to, well, you sold them all. So maybe you didn't have any that were, you know, dogs, but. No, no real dogs in that one. I mean, some were more popular than others. Uh, two ninety nine on these. Yep. The, for whichever one. Cross the board. Cross I like making board. it easy like that. Yeah. That's what I try to do as well. You know, like this one's ten dollars less. This one's ten dollars more. This like, kind of evens out. Yeah, you just just give it one number. Make it easy on everybody, including yourself, when exactly. you're doing invoicing and shit like that. You know, exactly. Like, I, it's not. Oh, this has to. This costs six dollars more. I gotta charge six dollars more. It's right. like just. I'll make you know, it up on the other one. Like it doesn't. Exactly. Now, if I get into some kind of material handle material that costs three times as much right, it's like okay that one might have to have a premium but as long as i can keep them all 300 that's the plan had a little uh piece it's of something months. down in there man these things really when they break in man you see some shit come out of there like keep it oiled it's I know satisfying you know, you know? To know how much to how, to know how much you're wearing something is like yeah I don't know it's cool when metal parts find yeah. their happy place well and then it's cool. like I guess I like it because it gets better every you know it gets better exactly. the more it breaks in yep it burnishes you got Kev addicted to such a fuck yeah you did dude yeah I got him yeah I you know what the minute you approach my table. And you're like eyeballs lit up, dude. Like you, like your eyeballs lit up, and you're like, "Whoa, what the hell is all this?" That was cool. It's like yeah. that's the reaction I'm looking for. That right there. Solid uh, marketing for sure. On top of a good product, right? I mean, you well, got to have. Yeah, but what I'm saying, like the marketing draws you in. You're like, "What's this?" Correct. Jack, like, what's this cool thing going on over here? And then you're like, slip joints. I don't know. And then it's like, but you're there. Like now I'm there, and I'm like, all right, let me let me check these out. And then you're like, oh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, it's like it's as, a, as long as I got you point. curious at that point, it's like okay. I know? think your product is one of the best things, like. For a show, if that makes it like above a lot of other things, like I feel like you can look at this and you can know, like, yeah, I got a flipper tab and a hole. Like, I get it. It comes down to maybe the size for my hand and all that stuff, but you know the OEM, you know what you're gonna get essentially, right? Um, but there's a lot of people that just you see it in the comments, they just don't understand the slip joint thing. And you get the same repeated comments that are like three hundred dollars for blah, blah blah blah, and it's like, have you handled one? Mm -hmm. No. Then shut the fuck up, because as soon as you get one in hand, you're gonna get it. Like that's it's. I mean, you guys tell us in the comments. Like I feel like it's when you get it in hand, you're like, oh, now I understand why this is three hundred dollars. 
and why everybody's raving about it. But until then, it's like you have it's like your brain makes you skeptical or something. I don't know. It's an interesting thing. I mean, luckily you have enough people on the side of the fence that are raving about it that it 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 kind of negates that a little bit. But well, yeah, and not only that, but like I've been at it now for almost you know getting closing in on two years so it's like how many thousands of these are out there now <clears throat> and it's like right. you know the, the the amount of skeptics goes down as the amount of satisfied customers goes up and so it's like you always have new skeptics that's fine but you don't have to look far to find someone who's satisfied and i was listening to something i can't remember what it was but the guy was talking about I think I was watching like a video about rifle scopes or something. And he was talking about. You're talking about Jim Skelton. <laughs> you don't need to name it. We all know. No, no, no. I'm saying I was listening to. Oh, totally I'm talking about him. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, this guy was making a point that. Totally like works. as you. There's a lot of good choices under $300. But as you go to squeeze that last bit of fit and finish and that last bit of performance and that last bit of excellence out of something, you're paying more and more to get it, you know? So it's like, can you compare my knife? Like, can you buy knives at $200 that are really good? Yes. But do they hit this standard? No. And to get this standard, I have to pay more. <laughs> So then you got to pay more. It's just right. what it is. If this is a standard that you can appreciate and this is the standard you want, then you will be happy with your purchase and you will think that it's worth the money. I tried to explain that to a guy today in the comments. And it's like, this is a, these are made to a very, very high standard. Bottom line, I think these are made to a $600 standard, in my opinion, because I've seen all those damn knives. I've seen all the $600 knives. I've seen the $1,000 knives. I've seen the $1,500. I'm talking about slip joints. Yeah, but those and are custom. They are, but that's the standard, right? Right. So like when you compare my knife to a $600 custom, these compare extremely favorably because a lot of the $600 customs are, well, there's a reason they're not $1,000 customs. So... Anyway, that's what I would hope people can try to wrap their head around is like you're getting a very high standard with these. If you don't want a standard this high, you certainly have other choices in the market. Right. But at this standard, that's what it costs. And that's what I try to tell you is like you can get something for less. That's not a yes. question. It's whether you appreciate or want the quality in materials and then finish that you don't see in the other you know so one guy was like you can get a Pena slip joint for 160 bucks and i'm like what fucking Pena slip joint is 160 dollars i'll tell you the g10 one in what whatever the steel is right linerless right and it's like did that knife have titanium did that knife have camo carbon did that knife have a fucking belt satin Right? Like, did that knife have the best walk and talk you can get? Like, there's all those aspects to it where it's like, there's some people who are just like, it opens and closes and cuts things. Then, yeah, you don't want this. You want the cheapest thing you can get that opens and closes and cuts things. I'm right. not going to convince That's... you of anything, but like, if you look at the price and what you get, there's nothing wrong with the price. Correct. It is, and the, ultimately, like, the manufacturer makes a profit. I have to make a reasonable profit, and my dealer partner makes a substantial profit, and then that's what it costs. So it's like, right. if you guys don't want to buy them, you won't buy them, and then I have to come up with a different product for the market. So it's like, you know, it takes a lot of work <laughs> to deliver yeah, this choice. Right. It takes a lot of work to deliver this choice, but at the end of the day, these are made. I will, I can say this with, I'm trying to find the right words here. All my heart behind the fact that I think 
the quality of these is excellent, that the standard these are made to is extremely high and that they're not just for looking at and they're not just for collecting. They will perform as good or better than any knife in your collection, not as a pry bar, not as a weapon, but as a cutting tool, forget about it. These things cut. And even this relatively thicker one, as you found out, cuts. And one thing, like, I probably should have been kind of more, I guess, vocal about when I talk about this knife is, like, as you get to the tip, it's thicker. Like, I look at this knife as it's it's the farmer's knife. It's the working right. knife. So I'm talking, like, are you cutting open bags of cement mix? You know, like, this is the grind that can do that. You know, I tried to balance you know, literally outdoor cutting tasks with still being a good EDC knife. And I think the grind hit that balance. It's not the thinnest one I ever made, but you wouldn't want to take one of those really thin knives I have and get it outside and beat it up like that. Right. It's still thinner than probably 90% of EDC knives anyway. Well, correct. Yeah. Because they're not prioritizing the grind for some reason doesn't have to be that way but yeah so far on two jack wolves feel good jack and big bro jack i'm gonna wait and see if he comes out with a different model of bearings for my third one okay and i can tell you because i've said this before based on the popularity of the gunslinger i'm working on expanding the bearing uh locking knife line so it's just finding the time to do that has been the challenge. Ask her if. Here's the way I look at it. I like to spend money, right? I'm responsible, but I like to spend money. But the trick is I also bring in money. <laughs> so like, <laughs> right. If I'm bringing in a lot more money than I'm sending out, who gives a fuck what I'm spending on things, you know? If you're just, like, responsible in general, I think you can collect knives and not have anybody on your back, you know? But I will say the biggest thing for me, advice-wise, if anybody cares, if you're trying to deal with a wife or spouse, is just fucking communicate. Just tell them. Like, talk about it. If you talk about knives and then blah, 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 like for me, it was easy because I'm like, I bought this. But guess what? I sold these three. You know, like it, if you just put it in words of like, I have this much money coming in and I spent this much and the money coming in is way more. They don't care. And if you're not making a lot of money, then you probably shouldn't be spending a lot of money either. So like priorities and shit but i don't know <sighs> i don't know if when do they rob yeah. asked when do they drop you, if you're talking about the pioneers they drop tomorrow at a uh, 2 p.m eastern is that right yeah 11 p.m pacific 11 a.m pacific um at the nearly every u.s dealer urban edc drops the following wednesday and Arizona Custom Knives drops a little bit later. Like Do they still later. exist? Who? Arizona Custom Knives. Yeah, I never hear about them ever. But I don't know. They, I mean, they they do a ton of consignment business. Yeah. So that's the primary side of their. Are they business. still selling? Like they do. Yeah, well I mean, them? no, they're they've never been a top performer. I don't think people know. Like, it's not where people are shopping for production knives but they want right. to have production knives and they do get a lot of buy sell activity from their consigning customers so they're happy huh. um you wrote a reddit comment um, man that was a while back frank that's cool that you found that <clears throat> um nice jim yeah i can't remember gosh what model that discussion happened under because sometimes I don't know if I'm in the mood to explain something and someone answers or asks a reasonable question, you know, like I'll lay it down. Well, Basically you, like people just don't understand. They don't understand 
the, dis- the distribution costs and they don't understand the manufacturing costs. So what people really don't understand is here's what people, it's not that they don't understand. They just haven't been told this. This will blow your freaking mind, guys. Typically, the goods you're buying have been lifted five times in price from the time they were manufactured to the time they got to you. Most, you guys ever heard the term keystone? Keystone basically means double your money. And most retailers, when they're buying from a manufacturer, are expecting to get keystone on their profit margin. So if they bought it for 50, they sell it for 100. There's not those kind of margins available in for most of our, for like our boutique knives, not even freaking close. Right. So dealers are getting 30% basically on average, sometimes more, sometimes less 30% on average. So it's like, there's just not a ton of, there's no, there's no like swimming in money from the knife game. Like it's not a big enough market in general and there's not big enough margins unless you have mass production like the major brands. And it's so ironic to me how people feel like they're getting a great deal on the major brands when since people seem to care so how much it costs to make something, which necessarily isn't relevant to what you pay. You just right. pay what the market dictates the price to be. But you're paying five times the manufacturing cost. You are not paying me and Kevin anywhere remotely fucking close to five times the manufacturing cost for these things. No. Because they're not made in batches of tens of thousands of units. They're made in hundreds of units. I usually try to end up getting around what the dealers get margin wise. Yeah, like you would hope that, you know, like how could someone say that's unreasonable? You're selling partners who do the last 5% of the work, you know, you should be able to make at least as much as them on a percentage basis. They they end up making more on a dollar for dollar basis because they have a higher acquisition cost. Where where you make more in the boutique game is two ways. Your way where it has a lot to do with volume, right? Mm -hmm. So the more you sell, your margin's not higher, but you're getting more money out of it, right? Um, And you got to try to limit your, the amount of time you're putting in as you're raising the quantities. Because if you're putting in way more time, you're like, it's not worth it. But the other way is like, this is like what we kind of do with Devo is you have some, products where you sell direct and through dealer Mm -hmm. so like the nip for example half the models are dealer exclusives half the models will be sold direct by us we can't change the price so like i can't say well we're gonna make we're gonna make more money on the ones we sell direct but no I can't lower the price down because like, I can't say the dealer ones are going to be 175 because in that scenario, we're all making what we need to make to make it make sense. Right. I can't say, well, since these are going direct through us, we're going to sell these for 150. We can't do that because we're undercutting the dealers and then they're not going to want to buy from us anymore. And we're just not dicks. Um, but we're going to make more money on those direct ones, which is good for us, right? That's one way you can, like, it helps. It offsets some of that, uh, what Ben was saying, where the margins just aren't really good in the knife world. Um, but the people who are doing this are passionate about knives. Like, they, they want to, they love knives and they want to make a career in knives. And that's why we do it. It's not because we're going to get rich. Like you want to make enough money to like enjoy shit and whatever, but there's not, there's not anybody like rolling in dough. I don't think. No. And I mean, you can definitely earn a good living, but you're going to work very, 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 very hard. And like you said, dude, you're going to have to love knives because if you're willing to work that hard, and in a market that is that competitive, if you are solely motivated by money, there are other ways you can go work that hard and make five times as much. Money. Plus, it's obvious because your product is not going to be what people want. Like, that's right. the other whole side of this is that 
we have to read you guys and figure out what you want and then mix that with what we think is good and our tastes and designs and whatnot and then put that all together you know what i mean like if ben was just like i love my carta like i'm just gonna keep doing my carta it would have hurt business you know um and people who are just in it for money they're like they're not gonna keep up with trends and like because you're not a knife nerd you know yeah they're not gonna it's a really interesting segment of business i think ultimately what to agree with what you're saying we put emotional energy into something so that our customers can get emotional satisfaction from it like if we were just doing this cold formulaic there would be no passion in it and it would show in the shitty product yeah. and you see and it would that. not totally see it dude and some people kind of get away with it because they spend so much fucking money on marketing and they just put them everywhere in front of customers right. who don't know better but we're marketing to the sophisticated knife buyer like our knives are knives for knife people right and like good luck selling a knife to a knife person that is a fucking heartless piece of shit right. like, or or has some kind of issues or whatever you know right you're going to get chewed up. Drizzy, uh, you mean like that, bro? <laughs> the PP <pee> jack. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's funny because Pioneer has the word P in it. It does. Designing shit from scratch isn't an easy thing. People think it's just scribbling pictures a few times and it's fun when it's anything. But at times. But it's more? anything but. It's anything but. Oh, it's anything but. It's another at part. Times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. I get the comment all the time that like, you know, I drew something on a napkin and that's how, you know, and it's like, there's just so, yeah, I fucking drew something on a piece of goddamn paper. That's how this all started for me uh, with Devo. But like, that's not, it didn't just go from this piece of paper to magically we had a fucking knife to sell. You know what I mean? Like, but it's always fun. I like to lean into that one as much as I can because it's fun. Yeah, and I've I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Getting the knife made is the easy part. Getting knives sold is the hard part. Yeah, dude. Because there is so much competition and there's a lot of like people competing. I said competition and people competing, but I guess that's the key is that there are people competing for your attention and there's people competing for your purchase. And everybody thinks that the knife they designed is the best one. Of course you like it, you designed it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's very humbling to go to blade show and walk around the show and see all the tables that are full of knives and have no one standing in front of them, you know? And it's like, damn, everybody at that show felt like they had the best shit there and that they were going to sell out. And it's right. like very humbling to realize like, geez, man, this is not this is not a hobby thing. Like if in other words, to be successful here, you're going to have to put all you got into it. You. Yep. And when it works out, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, if, it, like, I if I can continue to do this year after year and grow the business and keep working hard to give you guys awesome shit, I mean, it'd be the best thing that ever happened to me, you know. Yeah. So I, I try to stay humble about the whole thing and appreciative and thirsty. Well, that's what this is, Frank. At least my interpretation of it. Give me one minute. I got to turn my AC down. I'm right under the vent. Freeze. Eric Grimsmo drawing the rask on a cocktail napkin? Guess not. I used the notebook. <laughs> it was a pretty terrible drawing, too. But thank God for Colin. Oh, man. Uh, any chance of a classic sodbuster pattern? I'm seeing loads of people interested in those. Like, that's what this is, isn't it? What do you mean? Are you saying, is there something not classic about this? I mean, there's uh plain titanium one there's one in uh well, i guess that's the most i guess original or traditional looking one i love the fat carbons and the camo carbons so i'm here for that um what do you think he means by that 
He said, I thought the Pioneer was similar, but the tip is a little high. So is it? It's not it's not a straight spine. This oh right. Know. It's usually a straight back on a it looks well, pretty straight to me. It's not. They'll put it on a table. Put it right here on a table, Kev. There's a little rock see. to it. Yeah. yeah, there is from here. But still, I mean pull up, pull up a uh pull up your I web think browser. Sometimes they're taller too, right? Pull up your web browser and let's look at a couple of them. So look at the GC bullnose. And you can you can look at the case sodbuster and the sodbuster junior too. I was gonna search sodbuster knife first. And see yeah, sure. All right, Frank, got a good eye, man. What do you want me to say? Go to images. All righty then. This one. Knipix has the sodbus. So here's the no. boker looking. Go down a little bit. Interesting. Oh, right. You can't see what I click on. I hate that. Why does it do that? Uh, here's the. So it has a different belly profile, but I don't think it's that much different from mine as far as the. Here's a pretty profile. traditional one. Here, open. Let's look at it open. I mean, tip's still up pretty high, wouldn't you say? Uh, here, I always forget. It doesn't show you what I look at. So. So there's a good view of it. Oops. Uh, the tip is not something that I would question. And that doesn't even look very straight backy to me either. Yours looks more straight than that one. Yeah, it is. That one sort of dives down a little bit. Um, it's not really junior, my style. Maybe that's why. Let's Pull see. Let's Here's another DCs. one. Let's look at this one. It's only 35 bucks. Yeah. Was it made out of plastic? There you go. Uh, yeah, same First, design there, right? Yeah, this is Sidebuster Jr. All right, what do you want me to look up? Give me a name. GEC uh, Bullnose. Bullnose Buster. Oh, shit. Did it, did it show up? My bad. Yeah, we got just. I expected it not to work. Images. Okay, here we go. Yeah, they all look the same to me. I don't know. I guess they seem a little more rounded. To me, it's well, the, more in the handle than it is in the blade. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to do the handle the way they traditionally did the handles. I wanted to jack wolf wolfify it, you know, make it my style. Key. But I still follow the genu gener the general outline of the handle. Oh, they have a... Hold on. Let me test something real quick. Oh, I never knew you could do that. Hold on. Share Here's this tab way. instead? You son of a bitch. I can just click this fucking thing. That must be new, though. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, good to know. But, yeah, so I would say to me, it's more in this rounded handle area, this stuff, than it is about the blade. There is a little bit more of a rounded nature in general to the, just the knife, right? The design. Maybe a little more contouring and stuff like that. Yeah. Versus and they're the, thicker too, dude. Like that GEC. Yeah. Cross Annoyingly. The Annoyingly. I think you sent me one. I did. Back in the did. back in the day. Yep. The old days. So, and again, I don't call this a sod buster, number one, because I can't, but this is my interpretation of the pattern. This is a Jack Wolf interpretation of the pattern that fits my when brand. When he said, would you do something like a traditional sod buster? Yeah, my probably not. I mean, that's what this is. That's, that is what this is. This yeah. is, I would not replicate or try to copy the dimensions and aesthetic of the case and GEC let me flip it summit blade show definitely a grill to me. what what are you talking about i don't know we missed the earlier part hey of chef rocky thing. oh the i mamba oh he's saying he let me okay i sold mine to oh i sold it to rocky never mind 
easier. Uh, I thought the same thing. Yes. Holt and Herman have been getting a lot of my money. My two favorites for now. Nice, dude. Those are good favorites. Those are good favorites for sure. You want to do the giveaway, bro? Um. Yeah. What time is it? Eleven thirty. Trying to think if there's anything else about this knife. I wanted to talk about. Oh, uh, one other thing. I don't know if I talked about it in the video, but uh, I talked about the swedge, right? We talked about that earlier. But the um, the little angles on the spring, the facets, like you can see. Yeah, you got it. That's a really good. Hold on, let me blow you up here. Go ahead. Show that again because they really shine. You can see. Look at those angles. That's fucking sexy. Did you? Absolutely, bro. That is designed in. That is designed in. And is if you notice, like here's. Because I. Or... Yeah, aesthetic. And because I'm trying not to have radiuses and curves everywhere. I like straight lines that intersect. And so I form the curve by using straight lines right. that's just my style and it's like you saw it in the cyborg you saw right. it in the midnight and so i brought it in and like here i want to show you something that no one's pointed out so if like if you notice this and this these are actually gentle radii like that's a radius that's a radius it's not a corner it's actually rounded here here and here and then the spring is rounded right there. So like this oh. thing, I soften this thing freaking everywhere, you know? <clears throat> and I know pe like whether people call it out or not, no one's saying it feels sharp in the hand. So to me, that's how I know it, it yeah. worked. Like I, it, it did what I wanted it to do. And you got the balance on it. If you take it and put it at half, it's going to be really hard. Get out of here. Only at half stop, though. What? I didn't even know that. I tried to, I told you, I tried to get no. pictures. No. I tried to get pictures like that. There it is. And <laughs> yeah, the weight, the weight leaning forward on the blade lets it only at half stop, though. Oh, I meant to do that. I swear. That is freaking yeah. awesome. I was curious if that was. Something you tried. Because a lot of guys like to stand them up. You know, like they like my knives that stand. And this one, yeah. you're right, it won't stand. But yeah. because of the lean, it's got a little bit of lean. Dude. The blade tips it. Yeah. Oh, Donnie, if you're still on, we got to have a picture of all the soldiers. That'd be a good picture. Yeah. Saluting. I'm about to domino these things. I tried so hard to get a picture of it that was good, but I just couldn't because of the background here. I don't have a setup well enough for that. But oh. Donnie could crush something with that. There they are. Look at that, dude. I can't. Hold on. There you go. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> that looks sick. That is amazing. Yeah, they're going to topple over as soon as you knock something. 100%. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, that's funny that is awesome you know what uh, you're the first one to, to point it out and i guess i mean there's not a million of these things out there by any means it's just you you me and the rest of the youtubers but i'm glad you found that because that's cool what up acr how's it going man good to see ya and then um, I thought that was kind of cool, like how we ended the jigging and it kind of ends into the chamfer and everything. Yeah, that's more pronounced on that one. You can see yeah. it. It looks yeah. really good on the smooth tie one. Let me get it. Boom. Yeah. On the CF, you see the layers, which is really cool. Yeah. But it kind of hides, is... hides the angle a little bit, the chamfer a little bit. This knife is cool, man. I mean, dude, Jim fell in love with this one. Yeah, Skelter. I saw, I saw like the beginning of his video. 
Yeah, he loves this. And <clears throat> we're uh, Rob. So jackwolfknives.com. And then at the top corner is the three bars that is on like every website now. You hit that and authorized dealers comes up as the first link that'll take you to the page that lists them all out. Yep. You can also just check the description of this video. Yeah, yeah, that too. It's in there too. too. And if you buy from one of Kevin's affiliate links, there's no discounts, but he still gets like good juju from it, or maybe they kick him some money. Um, you don't get a discount, but they will hook him yeah. up. Some of them I'll get commission on. Yeah. Does the DLC affect the walk and talk? No. If anything, I think it smooths it out a little bit, but this thing, whoo. Yeah. Good lord. I find a coating usually makes a knife better, honestly. Yeah, slipperier. I mean, same with like locking knives. That extra thickness gives your detent a little more pop. So I would think it might be the same thing for a spring. That looks fucking sick. Yeah. You can see the facets don't pop you, as much on this because yeah they are. when you do see them that's crazy yeah is this knife i never checked is the thickness the same as usual the handle i mean it's you know they're all within a couple tenths of an inch right hundredths of an inch yeah so good and it's a good size I love the triple fluting, too. I love that everything has that now. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. And I like that it's become a signature. I think that's important. It's like Troy's cross-stitch he and I were talking about. For sure. I mean, I think it's here to stay for a while, dude. I, I It would I'd almost be kind of dumb to abandon it, you know, unless I could come up with another way to execute it or something that was reminiscent of it, but it just looks good. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Let's see if I can show off the grind. So you Oof. can see. That sucks, dude. You can see it's like the roadrunner coming to the cliff and then the coyote flies off after him. Yeah, I love that pop. That's my favorite thing for sure. Very satisfying. Um, all right, let's do this giveaway. So for anybody who came late, this is the O-Knife Heron R1. I have a video out on it from the other day. Um, it's just really good. I, I'm not 100% sure why I like it so much, but I do. So I'm giving that away with some swiggity, and uh, that'll be the giveaway. So... Should we just do the just do the normal giveaway hashtag thing or yeah hashtag pioneer yeah with a capital P uh I saw a question Paul uh three hundred bucks Paul uh three hundred bucks for any variant the the pioneer <laughs> the pioneer do you, you want to hear a story about the name it was almost named something different. Um, I was going to call it the Comanche Jack because my wife is from Comanche County, Texas, and her family are like five generation deep farmer landowners out there. So it was going to be kind of like a testament to the farming family that my wife came from. And I could have a whole like Native American theme going on and shit. But then I saw superlative had announced a knife yes. called the Comanche. You know, I was like, damn it. <clears throat> so I was like, well, whether or not I had mine before theirs, I don't even know. They they came out with the name first. So then I had to go back to the drawing board on that. That sucks. It's yeah. funny when that kind of shit happens. But... Totally, dude. I was like, oh, no way. But they have like the, you know, Enrique's had the Bravo or that's not Native American, but he had the Apache. Which one's the Comanche some... anyway? I don't even know, dude. I, I, I'm not sure. Is that the they didn't split joint with... that he had at dinner at Blade Show, maybe? Maybe. Was... What was the one that just came out? They just had the that like 
scissoring one. Well, not that. That thing's fucking crazy. I can't that's, believe that. That's Jared Osier all day. Dude, Riyak can make a hell of a knife, bro. I mean, good lord. I hate those magnet knives, though. Fuck I've me. never handled one. <clears throat> yeah, um, I'm not a fan. I've had a couple of those that, like, swing around. They're just fidgety, like, magnet butterfly things. I mean, it's cool if you can sell it, but I'm just not into it. Um, but I was talking about the slip joint they just released. Um, they, well, they had, like, a serrated know. one. Yeah, the... Uh... The one, yeah, yeah, I can't think of what the hell it's called. It was a little larger than I would. It had a prefer. shield. It had the shield in it. Yeah, it, to me, when I first saw it, I thought it was the Blade HQ exclusive because it looked just like the Blade HQ shield. I'm not. I forget the name. Yeah, I forget um, too. But yeah, it was, was a little bigger than I would I would carry or like, so I didn't I didn't want to pick it up. But uh, I think I handled it. it. I handled the prototype at Blade Show and it was nice. Yeah. I mean, you know, those three guys aren't going to do a bad job. He asked, How's the spring tension compared to the feel good? Which is perfect, in my opinion. It's probably pretty damn close to the feel good, honestly. Like, yeah. It, it might feel a little different because you can get so much leverage on the feel good, but trust pretty me, it's up I, there. I would say it's damn near identical. The feel good might be slightly stronger. No. What I would say, Autumn, is if you like it's the different. spring on the feel good, you will like the spring on this yeah. knife because they are in the same ballpark and they are satisfying. They are, they are stiff, but they will not bust your nail. Like, boom, I'll open it with the nail, Nick. No problem. But yeah. very satisfying. Yeah, the spring is definitely, I mean... You there can it see how it pops. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. They've all been, I mean, since I feel like they've all been good, obviously, but they've definitely gotten better. You yeah. Know? I mean, they made a lot of them by now, and I've been on them. Right around the single bench, bench. maybe. I yeah. don't know. Consistently, like, on the stronger side. Vampire yeah. was, was stronger, too. Yeah, I think the little bro isn't going to feel like a feel good, you know. I mean, I, I never wanted that one to be the stiffest spring in the bunch because, like, Mine the was one pretty damn stiff. Yeah, it, but go go handle it again, dude. I, I don't know. It doesn't feel like these. You know, we're talking like if these are seven and a half, maybe that one's a six and a half, or you know. But <clears throat> but I always kind of figured that would be the one that the sun gets. So I was like, if we're gonna do one. A little bit less strong. That's the one. I guess, but I don't know. I think it would be good stronger. That's also small. So you you. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's like the one that I have, it's perfect. It isn't gonna be any less than that. If anything, it's fucking might... loud and it pops dude yeah, like it's it, a good it's a good and that's knife. something people need there's a difference that i had to learn as a non-slip joint person is my immediate thought because it's the same thing kind of with detents on knives like i want it to be strong so it's like with slip joints it's not just strength it's also the crispness of those yeah. tang corners it's so a great example of that is the uh, notorious EDC Kingpin. I really, when I first got it, I was like, oh, like it's got a really light pool. But it's really well done. It really has a good, yes. crisp, like, pops. So even though it's lighter, it feels really damn good. Same thing with that Esnix Barracuda, that long, like, steel yeah. Has yeah, almost no time. fucking spring, but it is dial. Like it's really fun to open and close. Yep. Good, if you're good design. About, like it closing on you, that's a whole nother thing. Then you definitely just want strong. But right. Samson asked, what's the thinnest grind? So I would say the thinnest knives so far have, well, the original sharpshooter was very, very thin. The version one sharpshooter, um, which is the only version. And then the gunslinger was very thin. The little, the big bro is pretty damn thin. All, all the 
all the clip points that come out are thin. Um, but uh, you're splitting hairs, dude, because first of all, they're ground by hand. So, so there's a little bit of variation even within a model run. But it's usually like nine to 12,000. No one has ever been like, dude, this is too thick. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no. like you, pretty much anything you buy from me, if, if this has been the thickest grind and it's still thin. Yeah, I think but I measured you, it in the video. It was like 15. If you want what of what's in stock right now, probably the big bro. I would say if you're looking for thin out towards the tip, that big bro is freaking thin. I like the sheep's foot, but yeah. And if you want a straight edge, the feel good jack, grab a feel good jack. Yeah. All right. I'm going to bring this puppy back. We got 65 entries. I'll give you guys one more minute. You just put a hashtag pioneer in the chat to win this O knife Heron R1. Heron. You get some of that hair. Yeah, that's what I thought the first time I heard you say that. It's like, great name. The Gunslinger. Well, I mean, you got to think. You got a taller blade. It's thin. And then It's almost like too thin. Yeah, it's to the point damn. where like there are a few of them got past me where at the tip, like because they ground those damn things so thin, they want to bow a little bit and for right. people who are super fucking ocd about centering it's like i understand you want it to be dead fucking nuts but realize My that goodness. thing is so fucking thin that it is hard for them to keep that grind perfectly straight yeah. because that material wants to move when you relieve right. you know but so it's I like get it. i mean people want their center knife that's fair they do but it's just like it like knives that are that thin it's very difficult to have them all be dead nuts that's just the reality of it i would believe eight thousands like uh i didn't see who said it but somebody said eight i believe that i mean that thing is so, thin. Uh, you know a knife is stupid thin when you put your fingers on either side of the hollow grind and it almost feels like your pin like your brain tricks you and it feels like you're actually pinching your fingers together exactly like that's how you know something is hey you hear that yeah like if you flick it but there's like a zing you know or when you Bring your right. finger across it. It's like you hear it. So I'm going to probably ask them to grind those a little bit thicker on the next production run, just because I don't want the bowing. Right. You know? That's something you're not going to have a problem with on this one. No. But definitely not. I mean, it's still really thin. Yeah. No one's, I don't, the only time someone's going to say this is too thick is if they own a bunch of my other knives that are very right. thin and they thought this would be the same. But that's why I give them to you guys so you can educate people. Oh, there are only so many people hear me. All right, here we go. 72 people. Let it rip. Uh, Tapersky! Congrats, David, bro. With the wind. Where's my marker? Oh, oh, it's really cool. uh, congrats, dude. That bursky with the wind. There you go, buddy. Uh, shoot me an email. You should still have my email, right, dude? Uh, I'll put it down in the chat, though. Dude, it's so nice to have like space here. To I was going to say, I was going to ask you, bro, what's it like having that big old room to be in? So good, dude. I was going to take another room, but it ended up being like when I got back, because I only saw the house one time like fucking a month ago. You know what I mean? It's it's tough these, these days in the market. And um, I so I guess I thought that room was a little bigger. 
And I got here and I was like, fuck this. Like this, the other the the extra room is gonna be a guest room. I'm not like fuck that. I'm not giving up all this space for like I'll just squeeze the queen bed in there. I don't give a fuck. Dude, like, someone's in there three nights a year, like forget. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we're trying to figure out where we're gonna put like a dresser in there. It's like, you know, whoever it is is probably gonna stay one night or whatever. Like, and I, it's not worth sacrificing like you know every day no. for me no so, is there a closet in there yeah okay I'm, so they hang their clothes in the closet they put their suitcase in the closet you if, put a flat panel tv on the wall and it's you're already running. on the wall dude they left a mounted fucking brand new like vizio smart tv in there perfect nice um but yeah like had we known ahead of time and we were buying furniture and not like because we upgraded from a queen to a king so we were just like, we'll put our queen in there as the guest bed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, had we known, I would have, I would have made it like a full bed or something, so we could fit like a nightstand on each side and make it a little nicer. Because the queen like squeezes in, you got room for like, you know, a nightstand on one side or something. Yeah, but like bro, what would ask yourself this? What would your guests rather have, an extra nightstand or a right. queen bed? <laughs> right, that's true. You know, give me the queen bed any day of the fucking week, man. And yeah. it's like, can't imagine someone being like, you know, Kev, I really wish there was a second fucking nightstand in here know, so that right? me and my significant other could be on top of each other in this full bed. That's what we always, we're always, we always <laughs> say shit and then we're like, but are we really going to have guests? Like we never fucking do anyway. Like part of getting a bigger house was like, now we can, you know, host shit like holidays and shit, but. Yeah. Um, still, like, it's just not, you know, but dude, I'll tell you, man, the upgrade in the bed is fucking huge. We talked about this last time, I think. It's like, do not go cheap on your bed. Like, you spend a third of your time in that thing. Like, don't fuck around. So I went, no. I went top of the line from the brand that we already had. And dude, this bed is so good. And now it's a king. The dogs still want to fucking take over, but like now I can like push them out of the way and they still have room before they hit my wife. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm not like on the edge or whatever. And it's so fucking comfortable. I'm stoked. Yeah, man. Um, I'm too old for anything other than the nicest bed I can afford. <laughs> That's a king. <laughs> <laughs> hey man you're welcome whatever man invitations open for you buddy uh yeah i got i got some local dudes coming in on saturday to help qc the uh the old nippers so that, that's always a good time having those dudes come in and hanging out qc and and shit it's fun um How's that going for you? Is Donnie doing that or Donnie and Kim QC extraordinaires? Yeah. Nice. How's it going for me? It's never been better. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be happy. Uh, designing? Man, I haven't been. I mean, between training them and just getting myself How above many water. Did you have in the pipeline already to not I mean, you it sounds like you haven't done any designing for like six months or more yeah it hasn't it's a, it's a problem i mean fortunately i put out so many damn models to begin i saw that coming a mile away so i got i mean second releases you know that buys me some time to get stuff back in the pipeline i was surprised you snuck in a new one i've been working on that knife for a long time bro like that one back and forth prototype one prototype two change the design i fought this bastard all the way till the very end we were i was still having them tweak the prototypes trying to get it pinchable as possible for you animals who have to pinch everything you know <laughs> well change the swedge change the grind change the chamfers change these things change that dude this knife this you was gave hard me just, you gave me just enough so. Just, yeah, I mean, I, I got it to where it was either that or this tip was going to come out and I was never going to hear the end of a tip that you could feel if you jammed your, if I jam my finger in here, I can feel it. It's like, well, what's the lesser of two evils here? Sounds like you're using me as a reference for a lot of this well, shit. Dude, I'll tell you what, like you're, what you say, other people say. 
and you're very discerning. So I listen to the, dude, all you can hear is the voices that speak up, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, and I get it. Like you guys, anybody who's making constructive criticism is telling you what you need to hear. You know, right. that's the way I look at it. Now you can't always accommodate everything, but like I'll try to accommodate the things that resonate with me. So, right. the yeah. Things that make some goddamn sense, you know? Sometimes yeah, exactly. Like, there's nothing better than the, hey, I got this suggestion for you message on Instagram. And you're like, okay, let's hear it. And then it's like the craziest. It's like, hey, well, you know, this knife would, I get it. I get this all the time. This this knife would be just great if you if you made the hole way bigger and then you just added a front flipper and it's like have you seen like ha have you seen this one because like <laughs> that's what you're fucking describing and that that that's not that's a whole different knife you're basically saying make me a new knife because it's not like hey you could just make this update to this knife. Like, well, no, you're telling me to make a whole different design because adding a front flipper to this changes the entire look of the knife. And then, you know, the function and shit. It's just funny when you get those messages. Yeah, I get them a lot. Uh, but you can't close your ears to everybody because, dude, there's some no, good ideas. I get a lot there, of good know? ideas that way. Yeah, but I, I might not use it on that specific thing. But... Um, I had a guy hit me up after the uh, V2. We already did the pre-order and everything. And he's like, dude, you know what would be great? If you added some micro milling right here on that lock bar access, just to kind of go along with the um, aesthetic. The aesthetic or whatever. And I was like, you know, it's not a terrible idea. And I ran it past Colin. He's like, dude, it's a great idea. Mocked it up. Send it over to Best Tech. It's going to be on the production version. Thank you to Thanks. that guy. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yep. You know? There are so definitely some very insightful fucking people out there who see some shit and you're like, how the fuck did I not think of that? You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's Someone it. asked. Add this, add that, and that. And, you know, it's <laughs> just, it's like, no, that's a whole new fucking knife. Yeah. I get people asking me all the time, not all the time. That's not the right word, but I get it from time to time. Like, Oh, can you like soften all the edges and this and that? It's like, no, because there's so many knives out there that are melted and chamfered galore. And it's not my style. It's not the look I'm yeah. after. And it's not necessary. Like I'm not selling you a knife that I expect you to be hogging material with. Freaking 14, 16 right. hours a day. You this know? is a great, this is a great design, but could you make it a locking knife with a front flipper? <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'll uh yeah, I'll look into that. I it's tend funny. to get asked to not use a nail nick. There are some who hate them, like some of you know, Rob. I do uh, Rob asked earlier, what about the laid back jack? I'm not sure what you mean about it, Rob. It just came out a few weeks ago. Uh it's got a thin grind, a really nice needle tip nice choices and colors so check it out i think you'll like it i do not get asked often to use no nick i get asked yeah, occasionally for a dual nick um but most of the time a dual nick would look good because i do like the way it looks but i also understand it's kind of like an aesthetic you know yin and yang type thing so i like yeah, it either way but i think yeah. as a lefty i think it would help you pinch better on the knives it would. Like this. there's a lot of good reasons to do it but I just, but it's like know, they the never had them, time, right? Exactly. It just doesn't exactly. make sense for you. I get it. No, and I just don't like it particularly. So, well, there you go. That's important. It, uh, it is. <clears throat> uh, let's oh. see here. Some, yeah, there was a recent comment in my Facebook group about lanyard. Someone asked about a lanyard hole and. Some people didn't have very nice things to say about it. I usually don't like people being dickheads, but I just kind of let it go because it was mostly in jest. Yeah, but, I would make fun of them, but I wouldn't actually like. I don't think there would be any actual bullying. I was. I didn't. See no, there. It. No, it, it, like there's only ten people who like lanyards, so it's like 
The only way you do a lanyard thing is like this, where it's integrated Correct. into something. Yeah, it would not it's do not, a bore a bore through the handle. Like it's not in the way. Like but, I think we did it on one other. What other one did we? Oh, the uh, like this, you know. Right. But then you have people like I had a guy who bought. He bought a Buzz, right? He had a Buzz, and he bought the Zerku tie backspacer from our website. See how it has the pin there. Mm -hmm. He added the lanyard pin in production. The prototype didn't have it, but we had enough people who wanted it, and we were like, it's not going to change anything, really, right? And this guy's – and our pictures, the way we did the – we rendered up the backspacer pictures for the pre-order, and we never updated it after we got them in. So this guy emails me, and he's like, dude, he's like, this doesn't look like what I bought. Like, can I get the backspacer that doesn't have the pin in there? And I was like, well, that was a render from whatever. You know what I mean? And then I, like, I offered him a partial refund or I would just take it back or whatever. Um, he ended up being like, you know, it's fine. But that kind of shit happens. I, I would never in a million years have thought about that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And his, I mean, his concern is 100% valid. Like, the picture does look solid and... You're paying, you know, 70 bucks for a backspacer. I get it. Yeah, uh, he bought it off the picture. Yeah. So, but that's, so personally, I don't think this affects anything for me, but it can for somebody else. So, you know. But, and sometimes a challenge for me. 10 people, same thing we were talking about with lefties. If you're trying to accommodate the 10 people who carry lanyards. You're really not doing yourself much you know, good. No, and not, and Mine. they don't, they don't fit every design. Like the, where the spring is in the bottom of that slip joint, it's getting kind of narrow down there. That's Cause that's good. where the blade is. Like it doesn't physically fit well in all circumstances also. Right. Yeah. It's so interesting it's, on a slip joint. Cause the spring is like very crucial. Yeah. And you got a screw the down there. Are... There's a screw down there yeah. and th there's a threaded barrel inside. Up, now you could, you could design it, I suppose. Wait, before I say something stupid. No, you can't do that. I was going to say you could make the threaded barrel be the double as a lanyard post, but then it wouldn't be holding the damn spring in place. So it doesn't even make sense. Yeah, Chaos, the, way people, the way you'd probably have to do it is just drill a hole right through. Yeah, through. and I mean, that, that I'm not as happy. Like shit. Yeah. Yeah, you. I mean, maybe on the titanium one, and then you could bevel around the hole and like clean it up. But on the it's carbon fiber it ones, for I know the ten people. If I could fit it the way you showed it, like with the post right there, like this model, I might be able to pull it off if there's enough spring meat. But you got to cut into the spring. You got to cut that half moon around the post. So it's if there's not enough it. spring there, not it's fucked. It. Who? Did you see that? So and especially. Good. Especially if you have a slip, you know, like, I don't know. Some guys like to yank them out of the slip with the, or they go back pocket and they just grab the lanyard. I don't know. I, I'm never saying never on that. I just haven't spent the time to engineer it yet. Yeah. But, it, you know, I'm trying to change things up for future variants. So that does give me an opportunity to have a tweak. I don't so, know if there'd be a way to like, just add it to a slip or something. And so then you can just pull to... the whole slip out of your pocket. I mean, that's what's going to happen anyway. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. You know, I take the whole slip out, and then I take the knife. It's a it's a process. I love that. You know. Yeah, exactly. We've talked about that before. It's like slow your roll, enjoy the leather, enjoy Troy's hard work, appreciate it. Right. Two hands. Right. Z shaped thumb stud. He's joking. Oh, with nail neck pattern on damage too. Uh, nope, don't say that. All right. Let's uh, wrap it up. Anything you wanted to bring up or whatever before we... Um, I like to plug the Facebook group. Um, we're in a Facebook group called Jack Wolf Knives Worldwide. Worldwide is one word. And we've got a great community there. It's respectful. We don't have any bullshit. 
We have a nice buy sell trade. Secondary market is a great place to find your first one if you don't want to pay retail. Um, I should be plugging my dealers, not the secondary market, but I want you guys to get. Uh, does he like it? Anyway, I haven't read that post for the first time, but yeah, it's a cool group. We got over a thousand people. Um, I told the group that I was going to do a coin once we hit a thousand people. So that's in the works. And what else? Um, oh, that's creepy. That is super weird, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'm watching myself, watching myself. That's so weird. I gotta turn it off. So, yeah. So join the Facebook group. I, we'd really appreciate it. And um, that's about it. All right. Cool. Check out the drop tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern at your favorite dealers. Uh, all linked down below. If you want to check them out, there's also a link to the dealer list down there. So if you want to just go check the dealer list to find the one you want. If there's a specific version you really want, I suggest you jump on it right away and pick that bad boy up. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, Ben, as always, coming on for these. And uh, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Peace.